Oh, shit. All right, looks like we are live right now. So welcome back, everyone. We got Joel Farrell from Strive for 25. And we have Sierra Smith from, I'm not sure. I, I saw a, a new thing on X. So I don't know if that's something she wants to talk about too, but caught me by surprise. Sure. I tried, yeah, I tried to search for something and I saw the new name. So you want yeah, to touch I, on I that? I did. I went ahead and swapped over from Sun Peak Official to Homes and Hustles on on X. And I might go ahead and rebrand on the rest of the platforms, but started there and we'll, we'll see where it goes. I like it. Yeah. All right. So I'm trying to get my new setup going. Whoa. Hugo's here. Just stopping by. Thanks, man. We've been talking about you a lot on our weekly chats. So I kind of maybe we can start with that because actually I talked to both of you separately, and maybe so we talked about Hugo's post on X about state income tax being like a wealth hack, and oh Hugo says he likes the new brand. Oh sweet! All right, yeah. one one vote in favor of that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I kind of felt like leaving the the merch brand. Like I mean, I like I like the name of of my um, business obviously, but. It's not really translating well into what I'm doing now, but I do think I'm going to keep like a Sun Peak enrichment, um, like for my business going. I think that's what I'm going to go with um, for like the coaching, consulting um, side of things. And and I have I actually did some recordings this week for um, like with different people from different professions, kind of giving us some like content strategy tips and stuff like that. So I'm excited to get that rolling out, but. That's kind of behind the scenes for right now. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you took action. Unlike me, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> sitting around trying to figure out what I'm going to do. But um, yeah, I don't, so yeah, let's touch on Hugo's uh, state winning podcast. But he had a tweet or whatnot on X about state income tax kind of being like a wealth hack, and kind of what your guys' thoughts are as far as you know how how much do you factor it in where you know you may want to retire. Yeah, when I when I tweeted or retweeted his um, post on that, he said he would definitely consider moving just for that reason. So it kind of got me interested into digging further into if people would really move solely for tax reasons. And I know we talked about um, overall tax burden when we talked and the different, um, you know, going from the highest tax burden place to the lowest tax burden place would definitely be like a financial gain. But if you're kind of anywhere in between, it might not make the most sense. What about you, Joe? No, I mean, the way that you put that last year, I think is on point, right? I mean, if you're in the middle, it's really just, you know, if it makes sense, cool. But if you're in the extremes, like, there's even more pressure if you want to get ahead or build wealth or start to get that ball rolling to get out of your comfort zone and try something different, get out of your geographic area and, and, and do something different to be able to get that thing, get the, get the ball rolling. So yeah, like the coast, right? The left coast, the right coast, New York, California, Hawaii. I mean, some of the places that I've personally seen people, you know, make moves. Are you going to move just to the Bay Area for the, the Warriors? I mean, Sausalito, like Ooh, around, no. the, around <laughs> the way, like I would move there in a heartbeat if I if, if I could. And that place is gorgeous. Interesting. And then stop by and see a couple Warriors games. Hell yeah. They'll be free soon, the tickets probably. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, like for me, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm looking at so many different factors. But I, I think it's better to factor those type of things in. And, and, you know, like the weather and everything, you can always visit and vacation to certain places to avoid certain things. But, you know, kind of let your money grow and build wealth somewhere where, you know, you can take advantage of lower cost of living, lower taxes, and then you can always enjoy a lot of different places. Even like... um I don't know if you guys saw uh, Coach Carson's last uh, episode with Michael Zuber, but he was talking about how he was living in, I believe, 
Spain maybe for like 18 months with the family. But even so his money, you know, from his rental incomes goes a lot further in these other places. Right. So that's like a, you know, currency hack kind of thing where, you know, you're making rental income in your money in the States. And then that money now goes a lot further wherever you want to travel or live. Yeah. When it, when it comes to the weather thing, I, you know, mentioning that now I did start to think about, um, you know, some of the, the weather issues where if you can escape them. Right. But if you are living in an area specifically, that's like getting a lot of snow, like you can't, you can escape the snow as in like, you can get away from it, but you can't escape having to deal with it on your property. And so I had some, you know, family that lived in Idaho and every winter, you know, they would get feet of snow. And so with their property, they had to, I mean, they had a tractor specifically to move snow in the winter and remove snow from the roof of the house and stuff like that. So it was so high maintenance um, that, I, you know, I don't know that the being able to just, you know, escape it, like unless you're able to also um, financially have <laughs> that kind of weather to deal with where I can see like it being more appealing um, and cost effective to, you know, avoid some of those expenses. All Nighter Hider says it's called geo arbitrage. <laughs> yeah, what other factors? What about you? Where are you look? I mean, where do you think you're going to stay, Joel? In misery? Uh, I mean, if I were to go anywhere, it's going to be somewhere warmer because I mean it's brutal right now. It's it's like twelve degrees, twenty five degrees, thirty degrees. Like these winters, you know, it's rough. I can't I can't imagine living in Wisconsin. Or Minnesota during the winter, like I don't, I don't know how people do it, but no, I, I would be going somewhere warmer. So the southeast, Texas, maybe. Cool. I am letting in. I don't know if you guys met him yet, Greg Bailing. He, I interviewed him. He's in Pittsburgh. He should be hopping on soon. He's a realtor, fix and flipper, wholesaler, handyman. There he is. House with he's a chemist too. He's a legal chemist. A legal chemist. A legal nice. one. A legal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but Greg, welcome on. We have Sierra Smith from what is it called now again? Homes and Hustles. Homes that's and what, Hustles. What, yeah. That is her, her new one. And Joe Farrell from Strive for 25. So Joe has his yeah. own podcast and Greg has his own podcast. Greg's one's called The Gap. You gotta check it out. Uh, Sierra has hers too, right? Not yet. Not well, I have, yeah, I have my my YouTube channel, but I yeah. I am working on like getting not necessarily a podcast, but like the YouTube podcast side of it. You know, um, that that's gonna be going soon, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, and super great. legit uh, microphone. So I, I just assumed podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's the superstar. We always say so. I but just got the uh, the standard. Uh, Mike for podcasters. Uh, so yeah. Hey, I'm Greg, someone who likes to um look the part before I actually <laughs> aim. <laughs> <laughs> but um Greg, I don't in the chat, I don't know if you've ever met all nighter hider yet, but he says hi, Greg. He now you gotta connect with him. He is just the wealth of knowledge, all nighter hider. He's everywhere. Uh, I'm all I'm all game. I just came from a meetup, which is why I'm eating. Um, no, all good, like, man straight like you know three or four beers and no food so well, gotta, get, gotta get some food nothing's off limit you, you know <laughs> so how so yeah i don't know so what's with this uh property you found if i mean if you want to i don't know you want to talk about it real quick or one in penn hills so yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's interesting because uh like zillow has it at a hundred and you know thirty hundred and thirteen thousand. Um, is what it values at prop stream. My prop stream has it at like 170,000, but I think prop stream is getting skewed by a, uh, four one that just got listed for like 200,000. Um, and there's like another property that's like contingent for like 170. That's a flip. Uh, it's about the same, uh, like bed bath count, except they added an extra bed. Um, but it's like the, like you can see that it was the same bed bath bed bath count before they flipped it. Um, so it's just interesting because it's contingent at 170. So 
if you're taking the ARV, I mean, I could get it locked up for 90, like 90,000 and that'd be like 50% of the ARV. So like it's, it's worth it at that price. Um, I, I know the, the comp that I'm looking at, there's a broker that just bought the same exact house for 90,000. Um, and I can lock it up for 90,000. And I was looking to sell it at like 95, 98, um, because it rents for like 1300. So it's great for a buy and hold investor. Um, it's a two, one really manageable, um, in a good area. It's really like, you know, 90, 95 K that rents for 113, uh, like 13,000 a month. Um, obviously it beats a 1% rule. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like a good property. So, um, off market, um, if the guy doesn't get his amount, I'm just going to list it. So nice. Um, yeah. Send me more information, man. Yeah. And then we have Josh, REI stoners and just letting you know, you're, you're muted right now, just in case, but you are here and we have Greg bailing on. He, so he's a Pittsburgh house flipper, realtor, soon to be property manager. Maybe I'm, I'm not I like sure. It. I like it. Handyman house whiz is his business, but yeah, so nice. welcome, Josh. Yeah. So Josh nice. is house hacking in the Washington area. He yeah. got his first property. He moved from California to house hack in Washington. Where uh, uh, oh, where at in Washington? Uh, I'm in Lacey. Okay. I own a property in Wenatchee. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, this is our first property. So uh how's your tenant going? To- yeah. We just got a tenant in. Uh, they moved in over the over the last weekend. They're still kind of moving in because they have their place till the end of the month. So it's kind of like a slow move, kind of the same thing we did, you know. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just now uh, it's just different, you know, hearing somebody drive up and if they're not coming over here. <laughs> Josh Hugo from Stay Winning says, "Where from California?" Uh, well, I've been all over California. Um, but the last place we came from was, uh, we were living in Monterey Bay, a nice. pretty nice area. Yeah. Very, very spendy though. Like we said, we're, we we're living in a trailer and we were paying a little over 2000 for it. So. Nice. Well, you know, great. Since you and Josh has jumped up, Josh, um, jumped on, we were talking about, like as far as like state income tax as being a wealth hack, you know, moving to a certain area to live or retire, you know, considering a cost of living to income tax, property tax. So like Josh, for you, is that something that you factored in is why you moved? Um, well, I mean, it was just everything with California. You know, we looked, at, we, I did run numbers on places like Michael Zuber says, I kind of branched out from Monterey because obviously there was nothing I could afford in that area. But um, I think my wife and I had been in California for a long time as well. And we were just ready to kind of make the move. And as I was running the numbers on places in Washington, property taxes, it was just looking a lot better, you know, I mean, stuff was more manageable for us and, uh, California, you know, I would have, I mean, again, there's places like Dion talks about, but at the same time, if I'm going to move to one of those places that not a lot of people are living, the big factor for us is that we have jobs that need to transfer to those locations and sometimes they don't. And so for us, the biggest factor was my wife was working at Whole Foods and she has a career there where they were paying for her cheese classes and everything. So we were trying to make sure that we moved to a location that was close to a Whole Foods. So really, those aren't in a lot of smaller towns. And even the town we did pick, you know, she would be driving an hour to an hour and a half every day, just one way to work because of Seattle traffic and stuff. So, you know, she still was, you know, making that track even from not a very far distance. So, you know, that that was kind of our reasoning between moving to Washington or opposed to Oklahoma or somewhere like that, that might have fit the criteria. There's no Whole Foods there. There was no Whole Foods in oh. certain locations. So we couldn't but really There's transfer. Whole Foods in Oklahoma. <laughs> well, you know, like in the areas we were looking at, you know. Yeah. So that was the thing. Even Washington only had 
so many of them in Seattle, one in Tacoma, and that was it. So we knew that living in Olympia was out of the question moving here. Otherwise, she would have been driving to work three hours just one way a day, you know. So that kind of factors in all those little things in us moving was where are we going to be driving to when we do transfer from our jobs? And what does the traffic look like in those locations? And that was the biggest reason we were happy to have Dion as our boots on the ground, because I got to ask him so many questions like that. And him being an officer up here, it really it really helped. You know, he told us what freeways got packed and what locations. And like I wrote everything he said down just so that I knew when I was looking at my houses to pay attention to that McKinley Avenue and how far, you know, many blocks away from it. And, you know, even at one point I found a place that was pretty decently far from it. And it was on the other side of the freeway. And I still contacted him. Well, is this too close to that area? And he's like, ah, you're on the verge. And even when he said that, I was like, nah, I don't want it. You know, I don't want to be close. I just want to be somewhere that um, is kind of more outskirts of the city. But, you know, and that's kind of what we got. You know, we live in Lacey and it's a little smaller town. So my job's in Olympia. Mary's is up in Auburn. So she still has to travel up there when she's not working out of the house. So, you know, still a small travel, but not, not a huge one. So you left, your, La- left your Lakers though. Yeah. But you know, it's, <laughs> I could, that was the big, that was one of the tough things is Washington doesn't have a team. So, you know, even if we had, you know, lived in Oregon, we could have went to Portland. I mean, we're we're close to Portland now. I think we're about three hours or something. So we could go to a game if we want to, but that factors into that whole saving money, you know, and even we sacrifice going to games, but, you know, we look back in our journey, dude, and we went to like the first, when me and Mary first got together, I think we went to 17 games together the first year we were together. Cause I had a friend who had Laker tickets and I can get them all the time. So that's kind of just what we did, you know? So we've had a lot of fun and we put it, told ourselves this is the grind time now, which should have been then, but we didn't know any better. Oh, we've all done it. Uh, Hugo There's said, I'm, uh, I'm assuming it's soccer though. Seattle yeah. Sounders have a decent team. Nobody watches soccer, do they? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, now, Greg, are you planning to, You're because you're from Pittsburgh, correct? Or... Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. There's that uh, that rule that you don't invest anywhere that is not a uh, a, a major sports team. Have you ever mm-hmm. heard that rule? No. Yeah, yeah. It's either a major sports team or a uh, major uh, like uh, college team. No. Yeah. Huh. That's crazy. Well, yeah. the people up here. I mean, they definitely love their Seahawks and their Mariners because I mean. You know, th- there's just Seahawks, everything in every store, everywhere you go. So they're they're big fans up here. Yeah. You guys just got a new uh, hockey team, right? The Seattle Krakens or whatever. Uh, psh- I I've seen the logo in places because I, I I'm a merchandiser and I throw soda on the shelves. But no, I don't know anything about that. I just like like Mark said, I'm a Laker that- fan, and that's it. <laughs> I forget where that team, uh, the the NHL. I, I thought it was Seattle. I, I yeah. thought it was Seattle, but it like, is. um, yeah. yeah. Okay. It is Joe. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. Speaking of sports teams and like growth, like, I don't know much about the Vegas market in terms of what it really, I know it's been kind of volatile over the last 15, 20 years, but they've added the Raiders and then the Vegas Knights. And then now the A's are coming and the formula one thing they built there. Like, what the hell is going on in Vegas? Who who is financing all this stuff? Like, I'd be curious to know how real estate is doing there. I, I don't know anybody that's there, but have you uh, have you ever tried to uh, buy a plane ticket to Vegas? Now it used to be like dirt cheap to go to Vegas. Now it's like crazy expensive to fly to Vegas. It's, hey, Mark, it's when's the last time you bought a plane ticket to Vegas? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be there in a few weeks. And did you buy tickets? Did I send you? They're available still yet? No. No, it's a source I, of that. Greg. I, I, I sent it. I sent it to Hugo. I don't know if he bought tickets though. But Greg, how cold is it right now in Pittsburgh? Nice. It was like zero like two days ago. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. And and you choose to stay there? Yeah, I like it. I ski, so. Um, you ski in I'm, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has yeah. some mountains. 
Yeah, rolling, it's, rolling uh, it's Seven Springs. It's a rolling hills, but it's Seven Springs. It's uh, it's one of the best uh, mountains on the East Coast when it comes to park. Um, so that's my claim to fame is I throw in a double backflip. So, but that's the only thing I've done in my life. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's um, the, yeah, it's it's just it's nice. Uh, they used to throw like a an Olympic half pipe in every year here, um, which is how they like basically get to that like best park on the east coast um but i mean it's it's one of the it's it's pretty like known on the east coast for like good park so um yeah it's it's what our when you're east coast it's what you look forward to skiing grass ice and hitting park (laughs) so joe's in missouri just okay yeah not much nice there but i don't know so I got a question for you, Mark. Yes. You're in Pittsburgh as well. And now hearing about the zero degrees out there hat and you have properties. Have you heard from any of your property managers of frozen pipes? Is that something that you guys worry about each winter? Yeah. I guess you didn't see me and Greg's live the other week on Instagram. No, I... Yeah, man. What do you do? No, you were probably working. You're so busy, probably working. But I knew it was coming. Had... Yeah, me and Greg talked about it last week. Uh, we do we try to do a live on Instagram once a week. Um, but yeah, that so he's so Greg's also a, a handy has a handyman business, and so my we were kind of talking about tips on um, you know stuff that you can relate to your tenants or things that you can maybe do to prevent you know frozen pipes and whatnot. So I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit more, Greg, again or. Yeah, I mean, I was telling, I was telling Mark, I, I, f- I feel like if you're a property, like if you have properties in zero degree weather and, and you haven't switched your pipes over to like PEX, um, if you have issues with stuff freezing all the time, I actually, so I was just at a meetup where I was talking to a, a la- landlord that has a duplex and one of his pipes are on the outside wall and they're copper and they froze. And I was like, dude, like you probably have a leak in there. He was like, well, I haven't seen anything. I'm like, we, you not you not, might not necessarily see a leak like you know but like three months down the road when you have an, an issue like you know it's gonna be a big issue to deal with because you're gonna have mold behind there or whatnot so like yeah for me i i just feel like if you're in a cold area and you have if you're gonna do a first off if you gotta do any kind of updates to your plumbing just change it to pex um and then yeah like I, I just don't understand why people still do copper if they own rentals because it, it might last longer, last longer. I mean, cause it has like a longer lifespan. I think it's like a hundred years versus 50 with, with like copper versus PEX. But like at the same time, like copper, if it freezes, you're going to have a burst pipe. You're going to have a solder that leaks. Like uh, the horror story I had is I, I was managing a, a, a rental for a guy and it was vacant and his uh thermostat the the battery died and so his all of his pipes froze and then when it got warm again which which is what happens in pittsburgh quite frequently is you'll have a couple of you know negative zero 10 degree weather days and then you'll have where it's rainy and 50 like it is today so what happens is like you'll have pipes freeze and then it's 50 degrees. And so now you just have water running in your house and you have no clue. Um, so like I came into like a basement half full of water uh, <laughs> because the pipes froze and burst. And then when it got warm again, it, it just, it flooded the whole, the whole place. Um, so yeah, I feel like if you're a landlord and you're in a cold area, you should just change it out to PEX because PEX contracts and expands. So um, you don't have ever have to worry about it really bursting. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I just I was talking to my brother in law yesterday, and uh, I don't know exactly how the flood happened in his unit, but uh, he just bought a duplex and was starting to pack all his boxes and all his things up so that he can move into his duplex. And I guess the place he's living in sprung a leak, and the neighbor told him about it. There was water coming out the door, and he lives in Texas, and it was it's been getting pretty cold out there, so. Um, I'm guessing that it had something to do with that, but he, yeah, he said all that he came home and there was two inches of water in the whole house and all his boxes and bed and everything was just sitting in water. So I felt so bad for him. I mean, yeah, I'm, 
my he had a cat his cat said his cat was sitting on the bed like an island I feel like water is probably the worst thing for a property too because there's like nothing you can remediate it but like depending on how long water's sitting there it's going to ruin flooring it's going to ruin drywall like it's going to ruin like cabinets like it's just like water is just so dangerous to a property like if it if it touches drywall and it's been sitting there for a while you're going to have mold and it's just like it's like one of those things where like it sucks um i don't know they there's like um there's also like you know if you have a rental they sell like the leak detection stuff uh where it'll actually i think it's sold by like Odie, but um like it'll actually it's like it's almost like a like a stop leak kind of thing uh, i don't know if you've ever seen those on the dishwashers but they sell the stop leak stuff now where like if it's showing that more pressure is going through than what normally runs through. Like say like your dishwasher uses like 1.7 gallons per minute or whatever. If it's like detecting that it has more than that, it'll actually just shut off flow. Um, so like, you know, they're starting to sell stuff like that for like your dishwasher for like your washer and dryer. Um, that way, like if, if one of your like braids leak or something, like it's not flooding your house without you knowing, um but i mean yeah you can put like a whole ho like a whole home like house detection thing on um and that might be like a really advantageous thing that way if you do have leak if you're paying for water say you have like a slow leak that you don't know um you know it'll it'll basically detect that and, and tell you like hey you have like you know you have point you know 1.0 gallons per minute running throughout the whole day like you know you have a leak at that point so um yeah there's there, there's products out there that, that could definitely help a a, a tenant a, it, a landlord know if like a it's leaking or b protect their property and shut the water off if it has like that 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 leak stop built into it nice so greg all nighter hider says yeah his parents have odor copper and he had to fix two leaks in the last month so he's gonna repipe with pex and also there's this guy, Mikey, from Hawaii. He goes by BuzzTune, but he's investing in Pittsburgh, and he's probably going to reach out to you, and he's going to chit-chat with you all kind of. Mikey's a Mikey's a Sounds networker. Good. Yeah, so he's going to reach out to you, and he'll probably talk story with you. But you can hang That's out awesome. with him anytime, yeah. <laughs> hey, just tell him to reach out to me on Instagram, uh, gbailing23, and um, just how you spell my last name and then I, I can shoot him my, my actual phone number if he doesn't have it. So I think he, I think he might be following you on Instagram already. Okay. Yeah. Just tell him yeah. to, to shoot, to show him to shoot me a message. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Josh, uh, is, I think you've been talking to, to Jazzy. Your, your episode's coming out Friday. Um, I think she just said uh, I need to get her some information. So I just emailed her back and, Told her I'll get it to her as soon as I can. Um, I gotta get her like a headshot and write a little bio and something else. I can't remember exactly. Okay. See how but, see yeah. all these real official ones like Joe's podcast and like Sierra on yes. bullet points and I just have you come on and wing it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty cool though because now I'm like, oh, all right, I'm all I gotta fix my hair and make a headshot. <laughs> I gotta call a professional photographer over here. What? <laughs> As we, as we speak, though, Sierra might be rebranding again. She's going to be handy woman house house something or I don't know. As we speak. No, I'm just, just Greg's inspire me to, uh, you know, get into the ca capitalize on the handy um, part of what what being a real estate investor is. It just feels like we have, you know, we acquire all the tools. And so it's like, might as well put them to use doing something. I think I think too, like as a as a female in this space, you have such an advantage because there's like a bunch of other like girls that like look up to like girls that are like handy. And like I, I'm like most of the people I follow on Instagram that are like really big that are DIY and like they're all girls because like guys are just kind of expected to be like in this space of like, oh, you know how to do stuff. But like when there's a girl that's really good at stuff, like you can excel so much faster um in that in that space so definitely take advantage of that because like do girls love diy girls they love them <laughs> so just like take advantage of that that's why i bring her around <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sarah, you were I, we were literally doing your interview and talking about 
the extension uh, on the house or the mm -hmm. uh, the severing it off. Like, do you have any footage of you like, you know, in action doing shit? Because you guys did all that all that stuff yourself. Yeah, I, yeah, I I took some video. You know, that's the, that's the thing about being a girl, though, is that like I'm usually the one behind the camera, right? So like, I if I don't set it up on a tripod, I don't get much footage. But I do have some of like carrying carrying in like the subfloor or putting up drywall tearing out some tile from the shower like I have a little bit of that I don't have anything like I feel like what would really like resonate with people is like if I you know if you saw me doing like the plumbing or like the stuff that's like a little less you know cosmetic um would probably be better but um I could yeah I could I could do better about taking video of that stuff it's it's hard it's really it's really hard when you're doing the work like Cause you just want to get the work done. Yeah. It's hard to like turn on the camera and like film it. Like it it's, really is. It slows it down so much. Um, really like does. even like crawling in the attic to run the electrical, I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to film this. But then like I get up there and I only have enough room to lay horizontally. Right. And I'm like, I can't hold the camera and try to like reach for this. And I'm trying not to, you know, get insulation all over me. I'm like, this is, you can't film this stuff. Like I just, you just have to believe that I did it. I don't know what to You're say. You're like six, four this way. Yeah, it's hard. I, I know, but I mean, <laughs> it's That's not off? easy. No, <laughs> I was like, I under. Say, she's I was, not six, four. No, I'm with, not. With her heels on, she is. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, I'm like five, nine. I'm, <laughs> I'm normal height. Taller than me. I'm like five eight. So, <laughs> um, but I like I was like under the floor, um, with with some of the plumbing stuff. We were trying to get the pitch right on the sink that we were running the pipe for, and we had already like screwed down some of the subfloor, and we were like trying to fix it. And so I had crawled under there, and the the crawl space isn't very big. And I remember being like under the joist, and I was like, I am so claustrophobic right now. <laughs> and so it's like in those moments, like I'm like panicking right and i'm like i just have to get this done and get out and like that's, that doesn't make for good footage but we've i mean we've sent like our six-year-old son like under to like run wire and stuff because he can fit better in some of those spaces but yeah it's it's an adventure doing it all yourself say this, right. the best performing videos are like the ones where i'm like i'm just gonna film it i don't care and those are some of my best performing videos like there's this one I literally threw it together and it has like 60,000 views on it. And it's like, I, I just put it like to some audio and it was just like the crappiest video ever. And like, <laughs> it's got like 60,000 views. I'm like, what? Like, how does that happen? Uh, and then there's like stuff I think through that gets like a hundred views. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I uh, said so like, honestly, just film everything. And just like, whenever you, this is how I tell people, like, whenever you feel like, okay, this would be good content, just film it and post it. Like who cares? You know, um, his best one was day, like, his best one was like, he's working with a torn ACL or, or, or something or what <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to finish a rehab with like a torn or messed up leg or something. Uh, it was like that's like one like one of my best performing videos. Um, <laughs> what's your the, what's your uh, the other thing too is like what I've like noticed when I flipped that house and I filmed everything and like recorded it, I maybe got mm, like maybe sixty likes like you know here and there and like I, I and I know I I don't have that big of a following where like I don't know people who aren't liking my stuff. Um. And I had people who were not liking my stuff, never commented, never like said a single thing. They're like, you're an inspiration, like off camera. Like they would see me and be like, I follow all your flipping stuff. It's amazing. I love it. it. It's it's wild because people watch it. They love it. They like it. They just never like it. They, they, they never comment. Yeah. And, and like, there's a lot of that. And I never realized how much of that there was. Until like, I've got people reaching out to me like, hey, I watch you flip this house. I know you can do this work. Can you do my bathroom? Can you do this? Can you do that? And it's like, yeah, I can do that. And they're like, I loved your flipping stuff. It was amazing. And I was like, okay. So like, yeah. You're the worst follower ever. <laughs> the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. I've had people say stuff to my mom like, oh, I watch all of Greg's stuff. <laughs> like, I, I, you don't even follow me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's wild. So I, had, I mean, I had to get uh, onto my own parents, like 
trying to get onto my own parents about like liking my YouTube videos. I'm like, you guys could at least Not, subscribe. Yeah. My fake <laughs> accounts don't even like my own videos. <laughs> 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 Joe, you you're trying to find Greg's page or what? Or, or no, I just, uh, I just followed you on Instagram. Oh, okay. But, um, but we're I'm gonna. Not, to... I'm not gonna follow you back. <laughs> It's okay. I don't need I'm to just I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just gonna watch all your stuff and not like it. <laughs> Please do. Just just watch it over and over and over and then just act like okay. you're gonna push the button, but don't push the button. I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to block Hugo from these lives because he's making he must be drinking or something because he's commenting quite a bit. He's he's <laughs> saying that I'm making people with families work at 10 30 at night or something. <laughs> it is kind of true like i literally just got out of the kiddo's bed wearing god knows what i'm like okay uh you wanted to do it you said oh later's better for me i know and if you had done it at eight o'clock i would never have shown up and he also is giving away my secrets by saying i only put sierra on my thumbnails <laughs> he did i saw that when <laughs> i clicked on, it on my phone <laughs> well i didn't want to put too many pictures on there so i put my logo thing and then and i wasn't sure joe was going to show up because he's kind of flaky and then just Greg put the hat, and- just put the logo up there. And I'll show up. <laughs> and then Greg and Josh were surprised, so I didn't want to put them on there. But yeah, Hugo must be, I don't know, he's kind of chatty tonight. Yeah. How come he's not on here? Yeah, oh, if he wants. In the link. <laughs> oh, yeah, and well, if he wants to, let me see. Do, do you guys, uh, Mark or Sierra, do you guys know Paul, uh, Paul Rink? Yes, yeah, best, best Sierras, yeah. It's not I mean, right I, anything. No, I mean, no, I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I was on his channel recently, and he, and then I just uh did a call with him yesterday. Yeah, yeah, like, same thing. So I did an interview with him for my hundred side hustle stories, and did one on the axe throwing trailer that he's got, and then also the hive crypto camera thing. I forget what it's called. I remember. Uh, yeah, he's gonna, but he's gonna be in Vegas as well. Oh, Hyder wants on. I think. Hold on. Oh, get his ass on here. Uh, Joel, you were talking about Vegas. Like you didn't know anything about that market. It's probably, I would say, it's probably one of the hottest markets. Uh, like, and so we, I was in Wealthy Investor, and it's based out of, uh, it's based out of Vegas. And dude, there are Is that so many. Wow. There are so many like investors in Vegas. Like it's unreal how many how many people invest. But it's also so easy. Um, like it it kind of made me like upset when I was in like wealthy investor and they sh- would show like how to comp a house there. It's like you can Google Map uh like the the roof line and see like what houses are comps there because they're just they they're built in like droves. So it's like this community all has red roofs. So they're all like comps, this roof, like all these are built by these other developers, which have like, you know, gray roofs. So they're all comps. And it's like, it, it, it's so easy to comp there. Everything is like newer than like 1990. Like everybody that's going in there and flipping, they're just doing like cosmetics. So they're just going in and doing like, you know, everything from Tau to like LVT. So it, like the 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 flipping there and investing there is just way way different than say like investing in the east coast or like um like the west coast where houses are like way older so i think that's why a lot of people like vegas is because it's kind of like arizona where the houses aren't too old um so like there's not too like you know you're not going in and like having to change structural kind of thing yeah simpler blueprint yeah all right everyone get ready to feel dumber when Hyder jumps on here <laughs> <laughs> he's setting up his tripod I told him no cats though can't bring his cat on greg do you have any pets i forget yeah i got a cat oh man i didn't know how much people, people have cats <laughs> i love i i i like cats i don't like dogs i'm really? not a dog person yeah it's like i'm selfish though like i don't like mm-hmm. dogs because like i don't want to have to take care of a dog yeah. so it's it's more of a selfish thing how do you sleep? This is this is my number one question with cat people. How do you sleep at night? Because the cats do not. <laughs> my cat with my cat laying on my lap. <laughs> she curls up with me. I don't know. My my cat loves me. So yeah, mine's a needy. Honestly, it's it's pretty obnoxious at like five o'clock. She'll like sit there and 
paw me in the face <laughs> That's what I'm because saying. She, she wants under the covers. So like at five o'clock in the morning, like until I like lift the covers up and like let her like crawl under and get warm, like she'll just keep pawing me in the face. So. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. What's that? What else you guys want to talk about? I don't uh Greg, what about you then? So are you, would you consider retiring somewhere else, you know, be, for tax reasons and, you know, cost of living, I guess, or are you pretty much, you think you're set in Pittsburgh? Because it's I affordable mean, there, my, right? My family, my family's from Pittsburgh. Like my whole life has been in Pittsburgh. Um, I travel a lot. Uh, like, you know, um, kind of like my, my like, what i enjoy is like electronic music like festivals um so like we travel a lot to like different cities like i have friends in like arizona i have friends in like chicago like new york atlanta and like we we like travel like around miami um to go to like festivals and stuff um and honestly every city is kind of the same like you you go and like there's like nice restaurants there's like you know the up and coming places. There's like places to go. Um, I haven't really been to a place that I'm like, I love this place so much that I'd want to move here. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I mean, to be determined, but like if we would move anywhere, it'd probably be the beach. Cause that's where my life, my, my wife loves the most. Um, it's just like, you know, going on the beach. Um, but I mean, other than that, no, I, I love Pittsburgh. It's, it's great. Yeah, we loved uh, when we moved to Monterey because I had moved there because of a job offer. So when we got out there, realized the cost of living was high. We just had to kind of deal with it. But my wife was ecstatic because we were living, I mean, a couple blocks from the beach in this little trailer park. And um, it was awesome, except for the fact that a couple years later after living there, I started noticing my truck was rusting, my barbecue was rusting, anything that I had metal was just starting to rust from yeah. being by the ocean. So that ocean air just kills your stuff so fast. We had uh, just a couple of mountain bikes sitting out and outside, you know, but as the fog or whatever, the ocean air comes in, it just, it was rotting our bikes away within a couple of years. They were so rusted. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, yeah, we we deal with that a lot with like cars here because like of all the salt we put down on the roads. So it's like oh, it, yeah. your car, your car, like 10, 15 years is like just it might be running fine, but it's usually like a rust bucket. Uh, wow. We okay. have the man, the myth, the legend here with us. His first live, maybe. I'm not sure, but we have Ryan All Nighter Hider here. All right. I feel dumber right now. <laughs> Hey, how's my uh, how's my audio? A little it soft, works. but yeah, not, I mean, it works. Great. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> quiet. <laughs> here in just a second, then I'll be right yeah, back. yeah. I was hoping he's gonna come out with a wife beater on. That's that's your job. <laughs> how's that? A little better? Oh yeah, much better. Yeah, I turned the speaker off. Cool, man. Where's your cat? Yeah, no wife beater. Cat doing? Doing? Yeah. I did do three push ups, though. I, yeah. Yeah. Anything. So, what, what, what's going on with you right now? Anything new? Uh, How's your channel coming along? I love it. I haven't been make, making enough videos, to be quite honest. Really? Uh, I just, I did post one to, uh, to TikTok today, and mm. it was just one that I was scrolling through my, through my phone, and I saw this old video of me messing with a spider and so i put it on there and i got a ton of hits it was one of those stupid videos and it just it got a ton of a uh, ton of traction ah. that's the way to do it don't overthink it right just throw it up there yeah i really don't care what people think about me I it's hear weird you. how me those too. little videos get so many hits i was disc golfing and we saw this giant anthill and i just took a few videos of the anthill and got so many views and i'm like oh that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> all right we brought in all our viewers now so everyone that was watching is now on the live because <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
All right, well, I'm going to get there off. There he so is. Can start watching. Up, no, no, don't go anywhere, man. <laughs> I'm just messing around. We have uh, now let's he was pretty chit chatty in the in the comments section. That's why. <laughs> How's everyone doing? How's it going? Hey. What's We're up? all better now that you're yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. The best, yeah. best voice on the internet. I was going to say, it. man, you're going to help me go to sleep here soon because I got to get up <laughs> early in the morning. Time is a day. Oh, yeah, you're in Washington at the same time as me. Huh? Yeah, I got to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning, though, so your soothing voice is going to help me <laughs> carry me off to sleep. Just close your eyes, turn the lights off, and just hang out. Right. All right. The big question, though. So, Hugo, I sent you um, – Letting you know tickets were available to the ORAD event. Were you able to get some tickets? Yeah, this reminds me of one of your posts, Mark. Oh, shit. You're... What? <laughs> where you're like, I kind of like it when people don't invite me anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is um, I'm now the best man on a wedding. <laughs> So now I have to plan this whole bachelor party. Ah. And now I'm like, oh man, there goes the budget right there. But no. if um yeah, but I should be in Vegas, not at the conference, but I should be in Vegas that Sunday. Yeah. It's gonna I'll show you up guys. you're gonna show up for your friends, yeah. Unlike I'll somebody. See, yeah, I'll see you guys at the food trucks and you know, the cigar lounge and the bars outside. Oh nice. what is and uh you know whoever wants to do a I'll probably just be interviewing people. I got my, hey, I'm here with uh, all real estate investors. Let's ask them what's up. Ask them where they invest, you know, how much their portfolio is worth and what kind of investing you do. Like if it's long-term, short-term, fix and flips. Probably put like a video like that together. Cool. So I'll see you guys out there. Nice. I love it. So, Greg, I know you posted something on social media um, about trying to raise some capital. I don't know if you're willing to talk about that or if they're you know i don't know yeah i mean i can talk about it anybody know anybody with five hundred thirty thousand dollars that wants to buy on my loan feel free to um uh, hit me up um but uh yeah essentially uh i have a i have a flip um and put a lot of money into it um so essentially i think i've, I've talked about it on my on my podcast i had i like came out with um like a solo um just like episode of like hey here's how i lost fifty thousand dollars which is probably turned into like more like ninety thousand dollars um you know depending on how this flip turns out um but essentially like i had fifty thousand that i gator lended and that fifty thousand was lost but they recovered some of the, the capital uh and instead of like wiring me back that money they put it into a flip um, which is kind of how I got involved out in Washington State. Um, so essentially, they they were, they were going to get foreclosed on, and I got pulled into like the deal um, to be like, "Hey, this is kind of what's happening." I saw like a light at the end of the tunnel, and I was like, "Okay, you know, we can you know put thirty k into this, and then you know hopefully sell it for like you know at, at the time I was like, it, it doesn't sell less than six seventy." Um, and you know at 30k it was 670 it was it was an okay it was an okay deal at that point um but it ended up probably putting close to like 70 or 80k into it i i haven't actually sat down and like like wrote up the full numbers of like you know how much i spent just because it's like one of those things where like you're working I, I have like multiple businesses going so it's like I'm just doing so much stuff. I've never actually sat down and like, okay, I know a rough amount of like how much I spent. Cause like I wired the money. So like, you know, but I've never actually sat down and like actually like put it on an Excel file. Like, okay, this is exactly how much I lost. Um, but so essentially like I'm five thirty into the place on the loan. I put about mm, another like 80, 90,000 into the place. I owe an electrician 20 K um, out of good faith, you know, granted, I, I don't necessarily need to pay that, that contractor back 20 K because like it was the last investor that screwed the guy. Um, I stepped in trying to save a two people from being foreclosed on by a, a an investor that had just poor management skill and, um, 
I wanted to try to get that contractor paid because it really sucks to like do a bunch of work. It was his fault. He should have got paid up front at least half. Um, and then like he should have put a lien on the property and he never did. Um, but I mean, I was just trying to be a Mr. Nice guy. Um, I thought the property could have sold for seven fifty, and it's just the market turned and, um, you know, I listed it too high, you know, don't list it too high. Cause you shoot yourself in the foot because then people see it listed and then you drop it to a price it should have sold at. And then it doesn't sell because it's been on the market for like a longer period of time than it should have been. Um, so essentially the long, long story short is I have this property. The loan on it is only 530. I've been paying six grand uh, in interest only loans and payments uh, for about mm, six months now, uh, maybe a little over six months. And so I just, I've had my foot in both both sides of the pot. It's like, I haven't dropped it fast enough to sell it, but I haven't like pulled the trigger on refining it. Um, so I'm like, kind of like in this like limbo, um, What's but we up? have somebody who's like looking to re like rent to own it right now. Um, it's like a server living community and they're going to, their rent is like 5,200. Um, and my mortgage should be around 4,800 PITI. Um, so it stops the bleeding a little bit on that. And, you know, they're, they're looking to buy it in two years. So it, it kind of kicks the can down the road of like the loss. Um, and then hopefully in two years, maybe it appreciates a little bit more. Um, so what might be a loss might break even two years down the road. Um, and I'm just going to treat that as kind of like, Hey, this is like my Roth IRA. It's like, you know, um, kind of, kind of, kind of situation, but, um, not the best of a situation, but that's also investing that no one likes to talk about. So. Yeah. You were going to say something, Joel. Oh yeah. Like I had a flip that I started in 2019. Um, as my wife was, we were having, you know, my wife was pregnant and then COVID happened and just had to fire a GC then just sat there for two years. I didn't sell to the beginning of, I guess it was the beginning of 2022. So I mean, I had it for three years. And yeah. like when you were talking about like, I think I probably lost this much money, but I didn't really want to count it up. Like this same, like, uh, it's probably like I lost about this much money, but like, it's just too painful to even look at all the numbers and just add up. So, okay. It is what it is. But, but like I hit a point where it's like, okay, I got to do X, Y, Z more. I could just let this thing go and just like let it be somebody else's problem and probably, you know, walk away with more cash. But as my second flip, I was like, you know what? I don't give a shit. I just, I would just get it to the finish line, do it. If I lose money, I lose money, whatever. And we got it. And it's actually so a lot, so a lot higher than I thought it would. And, and that's a distant memory that I can't even believe I'm bringing back up, but there you go. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's, it's rough, man. When like you spend your heart and soul, like fixing a property and then you just don't get what you want out of it. It's like, I was just having this conversation today. Like, um, people like look at homeowners, like, is just like these like nice people that, you know, want what their property is worth, but, you know, an investor that spent six months, spent $60,000, you know, getting a property to like livable or habitable, like they're the meat, they're the bad guys. But meanwhile, you know, Joe, who's lived in his property for 40 years, that hasn't touched a property that wants 300000 extra on top of what they pay for it they're not greedy but you know the, as the investor we're greedy yeah <laughs> well hugo you kind of have been the topic of a lot of my uh i guess interviews or chats recently about you know what you posted on x for your state income tax as being a wealth hack and so maybe you and Hyder can kind of touch on that and what your guys' thoughts are and, you know, where you might retire or move to based on those decisions. Hey, man, I appreciate you uh, supporting me on X. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, so California state income tax went up 1.5%. Uh, I'm in the highest income tax bracket state-wise. So when I look at how much money <laughs> I don't get to see, Man, 
I could retire my fiance right now. We just moved to like one of the seven states, you know, like Nevada or Tennessee. Like I'm like, would I get taken out in taxes? Like that's your income <laughs> that you net. So I'm like, <laughs> if we just move somewhere else, you don't even have to work. Like that's that was supplement <laughs> your income. Um, so I think about that a lot. And um, I mean, I've looked at real estate in Nevada, uh, even Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, and, and Florida, I really love Florida. I go there every year and spend like a week. And, and I see the problems that high income state taxes don't have. So, I mean, you go to downtown Miami, like Brickell, they don't have a homeless problem and the streets are clean. You go to downtown LA or downtown San Francisco, <laughs> where, they taxi just to, where they taxi just to walk a block, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, where's all this money going? <laughs> You know, then you compare like the the state, the, the the bullet train that was supposed to go from Vegas to LA, right? That got approved four years before the Florida's train got approved, right? Again, uh, competing with the state that has no state income taxes. So, in t- in two thousand eight, all these people are like, "Yeah, let's get this train, right?" Dude, we're all old now. We're not gonna go party in Vegas like that anymore. <laughs> like, the train ever again, like it went and gone, and you know, <laughs> like it's over. <laughs> We're not in our 20s more. Then you go to Florida. In 2012, they voted for their their train. So this is four years later. And their train is done. You can go from Miami to Disney World in like an hour and a half. And then Vegas hasn't even broken ground yet. I mean, the whole, you know what I mean? I'm like, like the whole LA to Vegas one. I'm like, where? So you can clearly see like the money isn't really going uh, anywhere. Um, I've even known people now that identify as illegal to go get free health care in Santa Ana and L.A., and stuff because just how high everything is and expensive so uh that's part of the reason why i consider moving uh, to a different state um and then i don't want to raise my kids out here in california man uh, you know without wait, wait what tech. kids yeah when the kids come in oh. <laughs> when, when they come yeah i don't want to oh, raise okay. them in california um i would prefer to raise them in, in a different place uh like i see my little brother lives outside of boise and his quality of life is just amazing man like I went there to go eat some steak and eggs and like they, the cow literally was shot that morning <laughs> across the street. <laughs> the eggs were picked that morning from the other side of the farm. <laughs> and um, You guys can look up the eighth wonder of the world food challenge. And uh, I'm one of the three people in the history of the restaurant to finish it. It's like eight pounds of food that I get to finish what? it under an hour. So like I could eat, right? Like if I start a second channel, it would be about food. <laughs> like I could eat and um Do it. yeah thank you <laughs> hey we can test well, it on my channel start your food channel we can t- I'll test it let's out do it. and um <laughs> when I went to Boise and I had that I was full after just eight ounces of steak and eggs because the quality of the food was just <laughs> way superior that they just had shot that morning that was all organic so I mean just things like that um, you know, health is wealth. Uh, I definitely want to be the best version of myself for my kids. And you can get that work-life balance in different states. So like I said, I can retire my fiance if I move to a different state. She could be a stay-at-home mom. And, and you know, as a family, we can have that work-life balance. Like, I don't mind grinding 12 hours a day if I have to. But with the power of the internet and crypto and YouTube, you know, you could just work smarter nowadays instead of harder. So that's uh, just a little bit about state income taxes. Uh, happy to hear what everyone else thinks about. I want to hear Hyder now. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I know he has something good for us. Like I always say, wait, 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 hold on. Optional. Something good for us. What, what, what does that say? What, what were we saying? It was was stay winning not good enough? No, stay winning is great, but Hyder is going to probably bring something that, like, just from left field that we we can't we never even thought of. <laughs> Taxes are optional. <laughs> uh, if you look at if you look at uh title 26 subsection 7701 that will give you the definition of a person now if you look at that the definition of a person is anything but human it's a it's a trust it's a partnership it's a li- it's a a company it's a limited liability company it's a this it's a that but it's not human so that's how the irs gets us is that most people will claim yeah i'm a person because as we're just talking, that's honestly, it's slang. We're talking slang. 
But when we're talking with the IRS, when we're talking with the state, we are actually talking in legal definitions. Most people don't understand that, so that they go ahead and say, yeah, I'm a person. But really, they're they're identifying as a legal definition. And that's where it gets us in trouble, because if you are a person, like it's like it's legally defined, then you are a company, a partnership, a this or that. It's your statutory entity is what you're saying. And statutory entities get their birth, get their their authorization from the state. Therefore, the state can regulate them and can tax them. But we as natural men, and that doesn't denote gender, as natural men, we do not get our birthright from the state. The state hasn't given us anything. In fact, we give the state everything. We give the state its power. So the state is our clay. We are the potters. And if we don't consent to uh, to being a person, then we're not liable for income tax. And what we do then to give legal notice, so we're not just uh, we're not just saying, "Hey, I'm not going to pay. Fuck you guys. I'm out of here." What we do is what I've been told to do is contact my congressman and give him this information. Hey, how am I a person given this legal definition under uh, title 26, 7701, A1 is the definition of a person. How does this apply to me? And if they can't, if they can't give you an answer and if they can't give you an answer within a reasonable amount of time, well, silence is acceptance. So if you, if you set up a contract, Hey, congressman, you need to give me an answer. How does this apply to me as a natural man? Do you have evidence that I am a person? Uh, contact me back within, say, 30 calendar days, some some reasonable amount of time. And if they do not do so, if they do not dispute it or if they do not confirm it, well, then silence is acceptance. You have now you now have a legally binding contract that you are not liable for any income taxes. <laughs> Said we all feel more dumb now. <laughs> So there is a website that I just found like two days ago in all my searchings. I've, I've been studying this stuff for about two years now. In all my searchings, I have not even looked at this website. It's uh, freedomlaw.org, freedomlawschool.org. I put it in the uh, the YouTube chat, and it's it's pretty amazing. There's a seven-step, a seven step, not a program, because you, you don't have to buy into this thing. You just go onto the website and, and look at it. You can see the seven steps, but it's a seven-step uh, system where you – It'll it'll explain everything and, and it's pretty easy to understand. You'll you'll get it pretty easily. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> right. Now, with with that being said, Josh, Buzz Tune wants to know if you filed your taxes with Bob yet. No. Um basically I still gotta get we gotta get everything. Our W twos. I only got my W two from one of my jobs. The other one might have sent it to my other address. And then it'll have to be forwarded here. But until I get all my information, I can't really do anything. And I think um, Hyder can probably answer this one. Like how fast by law are companies supposed to get you your W-2 information? Hmm. That I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure there is some stipulation, though, maybe 30 days. I, yeah, think, they're I, supposed was... to, I think they're supposed to have it mailed like by the 29th. Or something yeah, like some, that. Yeah, something like that. I think you're right. Yeah, because I know a lot of times I don't get all my paperwork from everywhere until like the middle of February, and then I can start to file my taxes. Then, once I get all my uh, information, but like my Charles Schwab account, I could just go online and download the documents from right there, or from my uh, Apple savings account. Everything's pretty much done online. It's just those W twos uh, that we're waiting for from our jobs to come back. Hey, Sierra, I'm just yeah. having this like vision of your future YouTube channel. Okay. You know, candy girl, you know, maybe you got an outfit and then you throw in like <laughs> an outfit. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't pay taxes. Like it's just crossing. Like just and I don't pay taxes. <laughs> I'll, I'll use it as my thumbnail still yet. With or without the other. <laughs> 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 i'm gonna have, all of you are pitching in for the next photo shoot i do for thumbnails for, for the video <laughs> hider cj underwood is saying what's up to you in the comments uh, i see you cj is this your first live hider 
Officially, no. First life no. on this channel, though, yes. Oh, okay. What other channels you been on? Dion's channel, right? Did my first live. Oh, okay. Okay. In the in the truck with no light. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I think I was watching yeah. that one. Yeah, that was in Arkansas. I didn't have a place to film. It wasn't what well, was my spot. So I just went into my my rolling studio, my truck, and didn't have any light for it. And where are you? You're in San Diego, right? I am, yeah. So are you probably, well, you, you're pretty mobile, right? You're, you're, are you planning to probably retire there or, or whatever retirement means to you? Or I haven't really given it any thought where I would go. Um, eventually, I guess I have given it thought. I do want to get a sailboat, a double mass sailboat and go sail the world. Oh, that that is a uh, that is a dream of mine. I want to get some scuba gear. Maybe I mean maybe if I'm balling enough, I can get a compressor on board and fill, be able to fill my own tanks and just scuba wherever I want. Yeah, that would be awesome. That will sorry that will be awesome. That makes that <laughs> makes me go. moving to North Carolina seem so small now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hugo, why Chattanooga? Um, that's where I had boots on the ground. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sierra. You, did they fall out of your car? Is that? Oh, no. J J <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't be on here without a, a bad dad joke. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> One o'clock. Hey, that's my bedtime. No. <laughs> you. Mine wanted... too, guys. I'm going to get out of here. So I'll watch the rest of this tomorrow when I'm at, I'll listen to it while I'm at work. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Josh. All right. Hey, Josh. Everyone have a good Bye. night. All right, man. Saying out, guys. Yeah, I think I'm like an hour and I don't know. I'm about an hour and 10 minutes from Chattanooga. Oh, but nice. I do like parts of it. He probably doesn't want to see you in person because the last time he saw you, he had like this world <laughs> crumbled on him. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was uh, whatever like that week was wild. doll he crossed. <laughs> Yeah. So Greg, are you still are you still with um the Ryan Pineda group and all that? That no? What but you you're doing the gator lending, you said? Because Sierra was kind of talking about that also. Big gator lending and it kind of bit me ass. It was uh, before I even knew what gator lending was. Um so I gator lended without knowing what gator lending was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the proper paperwork in place. So that's what bit me in the ass. So mm -hmm. If I didn't, if I knew what I knew now, I had different paperwork in place, and I would have never lost that fifty k. So, yeah, I I was looking into that with uh, Paul Rink because I think he's he kind of does the transaction coordination, or he's he's starting to get more into that on um on that side. But it's it's like risky if you don't know what you're doing. It's not. That, and that's the thing is like if you know the right people and you know have the right paperwork, like you can because like the, the people I know, so I don't know, are you like have you heard of like the the gator like lending group it of Pace More? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you you have. Yeah, that's um, that's who he's um yeah associated with. Yeah, so like they have like this whole checklist of like they have to call the lender, not the lender, but the 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 title company, and they have to like, hey. Like, if this isn't okay, like, this isn't, like, getting, like, I'm not wiring you this money. Like, if you can't make this, like, not hard, then, like, you're not getting this money. And, like, you have to have everybody sign off on it. Everybody signs off that, like, it's not hard. And I, I was I was in Vegas at the time when my guy, my, um, one of my friends was, like, trying to, like, gator lend, like, 100K and to, like, close, like, a, like, a triplex deal or something like that. And... Like, it was like wild what they were like asking. And it was like, I can't believe you can like say this. Like, they're like, yeah, like I'm going to wire this money. And like, like you can't make this like, like you can't hold this money. Like legally, like you can't hold it. Cause my contract like it's like states that. And like they, I technically like they had to sign like both the seller and the buyer sign it. So it's like, you're safe. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. But I mean, Pace Morby obviously spent a lot of money, like, you know, making sure those documents were good. So, uh, yeah. I mean, but, can you explain that, for example? So like, 
hundred K for a down payment, then they go straight to the back to the buyer because you're doing a, a seller or carry or like, what do you, what do you mean? So like they had like, it was like a crazy high, like, you know, like payment and, but like the, so the EMD was like a hundred K whatever it was like. The EMD was a hundred K? It was like, wow. Yeah. It was like, it was, like, a, it was, it was like a crazy dude. deal. I, yeah. It was, it was wild. Dude. I mean, they were going to make like 50,000 off of just like this one deal. Like, I don't even, I don't even, I honestly, it seems like illegal how, how much they were going to make off of like <laughs> just having money available. Like they were just making sure that they had the EMD available and they were going to make like a crazy amount. And um, I'm not sure if it ever went through to be completely honest. Like, cause it's like one of those things with investing, like everybody talks about like how they have deals and like how they're, they have this in the pipeline and that in the pipeline. And then you talk to them like a month later and it's like, they haven't done a deal yet. And it's like, it, it's like one of those things in real estate. It's like you can put on this facade of like you're doing all these deals. You can do a bunch of work. You can like talk to a bunch of like title companies and you can have this deal that's going to happen. But like, did it actually happen? I don't know. But like when I was there, like it was like this girl was like going to she was selling like this. Like, I don't know. I don't even know where it was at, but it was like a million dollar property. And like that's kind of like where I lost the 50,000. Is it was a million dollar property and the EMD, the hardy, the EMD was 50K. Um, so like that's why I lost 50,000 because it was like, um, at the time I was gonna get a 20% return. It was like 50K. It was like, hey, we'll have this back to you in a month. It was like, okay, cool. This seems illegal. Like, sure, I'll give you 50K. I'll get my 50K back and I make 20% return on that in a month. Like, who who's not gonna be okay with that? Like, but at the time in investing, like I didn't realize how risky that was you know i was brand new in investing like literally brand new um so like yeah like these emd guys i mean they're i mean i know people that are like lending three thousand for like an emd and they're like they're getting 3k back in returns it's like it's just a wild amount of returns like i don't know i i sometimes i almost think like people are like they just want no risk at all and they want to make a ton of money and i think that's like why some of the like investing is like not really working out is because like it's hard to get money anymore people like just want a crazy return on on not really doing work it's like i don't know and like as a wholesaler and as a flipper i i personally don't think wholesalers should make more than than flippers like and i i see all the time where wholesalers make 50k and a flipper makes 20 and it's like, I don't know that like risk, risk versus reward, like wholesalers, I, I, I get both sides are doing a lot of work, like acquisition. It's like a lot of people like make the same like acquisitions easy. It's not, it takes months. Sometimes it takes like thousands of dollars of like softwares, programs, like follow up. Like it's not easy, like, you know, but at the same time, like, should you be making 50K when a flipper is making 20? Now it's a transaction where both people are saying yes. So like, that's the same thing with Gator. Like both people were saying, yes, this Gator is making, you know, 20 K off of just investing 20 K. Meanwhile, Flipper is like taking six months and making 20 K. Like, is, is it really fair? I, I don't really know. But like, um, a lot of people look down when I, I use a lender and, you know, I was paying 13%. Like, I can't believe you're paying 13%. I made 60 K. It's like, why, why would I not pay somebody 13% to use their money to make money? So I, it's, it, it, it's, it's really just how you, how you break it down and how you look at it. I don't know. Yeah. Hugo, you shared something in the chat, a file. I don't know. Yeah. It's your tweet. Some people oh. get offended when they hear. Oh yeah. We don't need it. to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was referring to earlier. And um, I always remember that because there's never a place in the budget for something like that, you know? So, like, you hear, like, oh, they didn't invite you? How could they? I'm like, be glad they did it. You got to go spend 100 on a gift, 100 on a thank you card, another, you know what I mean? Like, a new outfit just to show up. Like, Well, I was like, Mark is right. He's on to something. You, you said you are coming, so I figured, oh, maybe he wants to just come to the event. No, no, I was talking about the, no, no, the whole Vegas thing. Yeah, I'm all cool for that. Yeah. Yeah. It was the being the best man and my friend. Oh, that, oh, that's, that. that oh, okay. Yeah, that's Yeah, the whole Vegas that. for real estate and content. Yeah, that's all work. I'm all for it. Thank you. 
But Buzz Buzz Tune in the comments has a great question. So he says Zuber always talks about getting uncomfortable with his goals. So what uncomfortable thing is everyone doing this year? Who wants to go first? I'll go You're first. looking at it for me. I'm gonna drop out it. Drop out. Oh yeah, go first, man. Uh, the first uncomfortable thing would be to make sure I upload a thousand videos this year on YouTube, or get to a thousand videos uploaded on YouTube. Thousand videos. Yeah. So that's uh, I would say pretty uncomfortable. A lot. That, that is a lot, man. How many do you? What? How far are you away from a thousand? Where are you at right now? I probably have like seven ninety to go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's your plan to get there? Um, finish my nine to five work earlier and then just use the afternoon to edit. Oh, hey, Hugo, I did have a question for you. Outsource that editing. How much, how much time does it, does it take to edit one video? Uh, I've noticed it's about every 10 minutes is about an hour. Yeah. You got to outsource that. Yeah. Uh, once that revenue, you know, starts coming in, I'll definitely go ahead and do that. You're talking like five bucks an hour to a VA in the Philippines. I yeah, want to so. keep it American. He, and he wants to do it himself. Joel. I mean, you can do that, but like at the end of the day, man, like all the other people are not doing that. So like they're the ones that are going to take market share of everything. Yeah. The first ones I'm outsourcing are just the podcast episodes alone. Cause those are going to be 30 minutes to an hour easily. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and it's three different camera opinion. angles. Just you no, know, I appreciate it. Thank you. When you out when you do outsource to American, just make sure they're not outsourcing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, eventually be um, something I start as a as a side business as well. So it'll technically be in house. So it's outsourcing, but eventually that would turn into a marketing agency. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Hugo, my question is, so what is the premium for X? I think it's about either 11 or $13. No, 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 but so what is that like worth? Oh, what do you get? Yeah. Um, so that's the second tier, right? So you still get the blue check mark. Yeah. But now when you're replying to bigger accounts, you get more visibility and then you oh. get access to Grok. So Grok is a competitor of ChatGTP. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, maybe- Whose cat is that? Hider. I'm mine. She's <laughs> sleeping. What am I going to do? She's sleeping while I'm not. <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. What's, so what now? Um, and it comes with Grok. So Grok is the competitor to Chat GTP. Um, those are the two main big benefits that you get aside from the first tier of monetizing, uh, the first tier of verified on, on X. Can't you also have like, you know, minimal ads or no ads? Yeah, that's right. And you, you see less ads on your feed and on reply feeds. Oh, look at you, Joel. Yeah, yeah. I know a little bit about, little bit. yeah. But like for me, like if I'm if I'm spending time on Twitter and growing my my stuff and trying to like be able to maybe sell a product or whatever, like I, I want to see people's ads. I want to see their copy. I want to see their hooks. I want, I want to be able to, so that's something that, you know, I would be interested in not doing, you know, if I got to that point. Cool. And you got to hop off then, Hugo. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. It's been no, a pleasure. Thanks, man. Nice seeing everyone and maybe I'll see you guys next month. Have a good night. Okay, All right, man. Thanks, man. Bye. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, 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 Hyder, did you hear that Greg has a cat also? <laughs> we're all cat dads now yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was uh, loving it <laughs> a lot of people don't trust our cat uh, us cat people so right. <laughs> do i need to get yeah. off here do i need to have a moment let me get off here. <laughs> <laughs> all right who um, wants to go next uncomfortable what, what are they working on or oh uncomfortable yeah oh gosh I don't know, I'm, but I was gonna say I'm I'm talking with Mikey tomorrow about about some goals and just like some um, side hustle stuff and stuff he's working on and wanting to work on. So I'm looking forward to that chat. Uh, oh, well, tell me why Mikey can chit chat for hours, man. Well, Greg, watch out! He's gonna hit you up too. Him. So he's closing. He's closing on his second property in Pittsburgh. It's not using me. What is this? this is 
Uh, well, yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, you got to get that property management stuff going. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'm doing anything that's making me super uncomfortable with my goals. Uh, I think, I think just, I, I don't know, putting yourself out there on social media, like trying to be more thoughtful with engagement and just putting out more content always is a little bit vulnerable and that can be uncomfortable, but I feel like now that like I have a good posse, <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm the wing nut. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I got lectured by Sierra for putting too many winky faces. <laughs> yes, because Mark wants lady talent on his channel, right? And then he gets someone on the comments of his post who seems to be willing to come on the channel. But then three comments in a row, he about, <laughs> about asking her to come on the channel. At the end of his comment, he puts a winky face. <laughs> I think I hit the wrong one. Creepy. creepy. I'm like going through there and I'm like, this girl does not know what he means by this the third I, I, winky face. I think it was like two in the morning. I'm trying to work out and she's so I'm just trying to quickly reply. Because <laughs> she's like, Yeah, you know, I'd love to come on and share, you know, anything uh, that I can. And he's like, Oh, yeah, I would love to have you on the channel, wink. <laughs> Well, she messaged me and she's looking for a time, so it, it's all good. Yeah. Anyways, so I'm I, I am privately giving Mark some coaching on <laughs> on his uh, social media strategy. Oh, uh, what about you, Greg? Any uncomfortable stuff you're working on right now? Not really. I'm just trying to make money, dude. That's yep. That's it. Um, I mean, honestly, I would say just, you know, um, being uncomfortable, I guess, is just trying to, like, do things that I'm not used to. Um, but I mean, that's it. I mean, I'm just trying to honestly this year, I'm just trying to stay in my lane, um, grow my like marketing and branding. Um, I've been really focusing on branding this year. Um, so just like, I don't know, just like, I want to be able to like people to see my logo and then be like, yes, that's Greg. And we're like, yes, I want to hire that person. Um, so, you know, um, those are just like a couple of things I'm working on um, and just integrating everything to like kind of work together. Um, you know, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's like uncomfortable. I've been uncomfortable for like three years. So it's like, I don't know if I can really be uncomfortable at this point. What's the what's the the piece of or the, what business are you trying to be able to do more of? So you do flipping and property management, or like what do you do again? So I, I do I don't know. It's it's hard because real estate is not today money. Um, I, I would really like to focus on real estate like a hundred percent of my time. Um, you know, but like being in real estate, unless I'm wholesaling, like that's you know, wholesaling is. 90 day money um you know flipping is six month money um and agent like being an agent is like probably 60 day money so like all of those are like hey i get paid in you know three months essentially except for wholesaling and wholesaling i still consider like a three-month process because um data shows that a touch point on a person that you text that you like cold outreach is going to be 90 days to close. So like, you know, everybody says that like wholesaling is like today money, but like if I reach out to somebody and I touch them, you know, 13, 14 times, I'm not getting paid for like another 90 days. Um, so contracting is really what I'm focusing on um, because I can make a lot of money. Um, so my goal this year is to make 180,000 in contracting. Um and so like I broke it down and it basically it breaks down to like a hundred dollars an hour. Um, because with contracting, you're not working a hundred percent of the time. So like, you know, if I'm working at full capacity at a hundred dollars an hour, it's like, okay, I can make, you know, maybe like 300,000, but like, it, when you're working contracting, especially by yourself, you have a lot of like billable hours that aren't actually billable. 
So like if I am driving, if I am invoicing, if I am doing a thing that like going and quoting. So like essentially I'm just building my like my system to work for me to like I can make enough money to breathe. And it's like crazy to say 180,000 because like, you know, if you'd have told me three years ago, hey, 180,000, like I made it. But like now like I look at it and like 180,000, like maybe I take a nice vacation you know, but like, it's, it's really like, I was just watching a video on like 120, 130 is like the new middle class. So it's like, I don't know. So like you break it down like that. And like, so that, that's kind of like what my goal is, is like, just to actually figure out like what I need to make to like make a good living um, and be happy. And cause I mean, my, if I want to go get a job and not be stressed, I can make a hundred thousand dollars a year going and pretty much doing anything W2 world. So like my goal is to make enough more money than a W2 and also not be stressed. So um I don't know. I don't know if you guys struggle with that, but that's kind of like where I'm at right now. It's like okay, like I can I want to make enough money to where I'm not it's not just a high paying job. So I can get out of because right now like you always are going to have a high paying job when you enter into like entrepreneurship at first and you got to like build yourself out of that high paying job so like my goal is to like, get to the point where i can get out of that high paying job yeah hormozy just had an episode like literally that he released i think yesterday that talked about that if you have a business and you want to sell it like you have to be able to get out of the business and be able to get all the systems and things done otherwise yeah you're so you're so employed but you're still a part of the business I, I hear it all the time. It's like, oh, nobody can do the job as good as me. It's like, well, you you don't have a, a business then. You just have a job. Like, and, and, and like, you know, it might suck to say that. Like, I know people like making $300,000 a year and I'm not knocking it. Like, that's really good money. But like it, my point, like, I don't want to make $300,000 a year as a job. Like, I want to own a business. Like, that's my whole goal. So like, if you're saying, Hey, you can go get a W-2 job, make a hundred thousand dollars and then be able to invest that and have free time where like that is a business. I'll choose that over having a job that is I my business, but I'm making 300,000, but I don't have time to breathe. Yeah. What about you, Hyder? Uh, push-ups are uncomfortable. Huh? Uh, my big business venture is where I go fishing in Alaska, food is a huge, huge time sucker. It, uh, mm. it sucks having to make food, just plain and simple. We need to be fishing. So my thing is I want to create what's called the burger barge, where I anchor up in the river right next to everybody else. And guys can get on the radio and radio ahead I make the food. They come pick it up, do a touch and go. Everything's PO'd. No, uh, no cash gets needs to be distributed. Very, very easy, and it would be extremely lucrative. Because, like I said, people need to sleep, people need to fish, and making food sucks. Nice. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, there's a huge, huge need for it. Guys have been doing uh, the the food gigs on land, but once once people are in their boats, they're not ordering pizzas anymore. So the burger barge, it is, and it's going to be really easy to set up. Uh, just a few requirements, a business license, uh, not really requirements, but I'm going to do it anyways, business license, uh, distributor's license, and then uh, just contact all the canneries, get PO orders. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. And you would do that in San Diego area, California? That would be in Alaska. So that would be oh, in Alaska. Okay. That'd be June and July is when I'm up there. So early June, I'll be on land. I want to I want to get a food truck. Uh, work on land. Then once the boats start going in the water, I get uh, what's it called a a row row a roll on roll off. One of those landing craft with the uh, the bow that drops down. Mm -hmm. I then drive the food truck on there. Go park it out in the uh, in the bay. Go anchor up in the bay, and then uh, turn the lights on, turn the radio on, and take orders. Nice. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I do have a girl out here in San Diego that runs a restaurant that uh, wants to partner up with that. So she'll actually be doing the, the food side. I'll do the business side. Dang. 
He has should some, be pretty lucrative. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some good goals. <laughs> Especially being POs. Guys aren't even gonna know what they're spending. You know what I mean? It's it's just gonna be mindless. And they're and they're making money anyways. They're making currency. So up there they they tend to just spend it away. I think a carton of cigarettes up there, which I don't smoke, but a carton of cigarettes is something like 250 bucks, and they buy them all the time. What? Right. Yeah. I know people that drive. I know the people that drive to West Virginia to buy like cartons of cigarettes because it's like twenty. It's like twenty dollars cheaper for like a carton. (laughs) So they'll drive like all the way to West Virginia to save like twenty bucks. (laughs) (laughs) Try all your gas money away, huh? Yeah, yeah, dude. Seriously, <laughs> it's the thrill of the chase. <laughs> have you ever seen? Have you ever seen like uh, Ryan Pineda making fun of like all the people like that like sit in like a uh, like the line? They'll sit in like a line two hours like to yeah. save like twenty dollars in gas. Is yeah, like, like Costco or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's like, do you not value your time? Like you're gonna right. sit in line for two hours, to, like save twenty bucks in gas. <laughs> Yeah, I ran out of gas the other day on the road. <laughs> See, I honestly saying I what? I have an old I have like an old 2001 Subaru. Yeah, and I'm telling you, man, if you don't get gas as soon as it's like get me gas, you're like empty. I, oh. I was like driving, and I I was like chugging, and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, you're you're doing the Flintstones. You put your legs on and they should run. No, but my sensor's broken, I guess, because my stuff was on quarter tank and I didn't <laughs> I, it was just driving and my car died, my truck died. <laughs> Dude, uh that, that Seinfeld episode, you know, where Jerry's, you know, test or is it George testing the 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 empty on the gas tank? Anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. on my on my bachelor um uh, my bachelor party. We piled up like eight dudes and drove in a suburban down to New Orleans. And like on the way back, um, you know, on our first pit stop of like getting gas, like we were running out of gas and like we had a massive stretch where there were no places to get off. And like we were literally like coasting up the exit. We completely <laughs> ran out of gas, turn left, coasted in, like just got there just in time. Like the thing that the power steering was off. The gas pedal was dead. Like we just coasted like barely into the thing. It was just hilarious. Just eight drunken, you know, whatever dudes. Just like <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, let's go to you then, Joe. What uncomfortable stuff are you working on this year? Uh, so I, I Mark, I think I was sharing this with you. Um, uh, I'm gonna be doing a uh public speaking presentation in, for, in maryland in the end of february oh yeah so, same like time that, as vegas cool just that just after that so uh, convenient <laughs> and then and like I've, I've had to do a few things before and i absolutely dread it hate it um but once i get going if i know what i'm talking about i can do it but I, I actually dread it but that's something i'll probably be doing more of and and like I didn't really expect it, but they paid for my travel. So technically, I guess it's considered a paid speaking gig. Just wear your ugly sweater to distract them. I got to get a couple more of those. Those are badass. (laughs) It's so distracting. What's that guy's talking about? Oh, no, his sweater's terrible. So are you going to have to, like, make a presentation? Or are you just, like, going to freestyle the the talk? Or, like, what's your plan? Just wing it. (laughs) Going to borrow the wing nut. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's no, gonna I mean, phone a, a phone. friend and call call you in <laughs> yeah like, here, can you help me out here no i mean i'll i'll, I'll have it planned out I and mean, it won't be like on a on like a powerpoint and i just be talking telling stories getting interactive stuff like that and it's about like personal brand you know that kind of stuff so what, what can you share about personal brand share just fucking do it and don't stop like that's literally the message. Don't stop because like when you're talking before about people like lurking and like seeing your stuff or not commenting, Facebook, like and I, Sarah and Mark Pryor would tell a story like people on Facebook, people that you know, like Instagram, like you don't know who the hell people are that are following you, but Facebook, it's people that you know are in that some type of uh, connection to you. Like people see your stuff and they don't comment, they don't 
you know, like it, not, but like people I've haven't seen for three years, you know, there's been a, a couple situations walking into a room with people and like, Oh my God, I see your stuff. What's going on? And like, you don't comment, you don't like, you don't whatever, but cool. Thank you. Um, but like just being able to have, you know, the, the deck or like someone sees your podcast and you're at 50 episodes, you're at hundred episodes, you're at 120 episodes. Like the conversation doesn't even touch on what it's about or how's it going or how many followers you have. Like they see you have a hundred episodes, like automatically they think something in a certain way than if you had 10 episodes or four episodes, like to anybody out there that's listening to the six people that's listening, just do it and don't stop. All the other stuff you can figure out along the way. Well, okay. Like to that point, um, I don't think people understand how powerful a podcast, a podcast is. Um, you could be nobody, literally nobody. And you say you have a podcast and people are like, oh, you have a podcast. It's like, <laughs> like literally anybody can make a podcast. Like, yes, but I have a podcast. It like people like give you authority when you have a podcast. It like gives you a platform and like you automatically become like this, um, not leader necessarily, but like figure. I, and it's like weird to say that because like people will automatically be like, oh, he has a podcast. Like, and that just like comes with authority. And it, it's wild because like you don't have to have any, re- you don't even have to be have a good podcast. But if you have a podcast, it's like, oh, you got a podcast. Nice. Like, and I, I think there's like a crazy stat. Like you have to have just more than 20 episodes and you're in like the top 1% of podcasters. <laughs> really? Yeah. My goodness. Hmm. Low bar. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Hider. I would oh, I would say like what's interesting about the podcasting side of things is I mean, it can it can take on so many different methods of being like lucrative to yourself whether that's through the platform through the reputation you have for just having it like you're saying through um becoming like getting speaking gigs out of it or getting paid to be on someone else's podcast because you have that practice of just like interviewing skills or being able to like pitch yourself really well um but then just like the networking of it where you get to have people on and then you you know, you suddenly have like opportunities open up because you have the conversations after the podcast or before the podcast where you're like finding out what they're doing. And then you get like all of this insider knowledge from these people who are really successful at whatever they do. And that is like extremely beneficial. Like just it's just like free coaching a lot of times like you can be like oh i need i need advice on this and you start looking at people and you ask them to you know come on your show and then my my advice is like pay for the pro zoom subscription so that when you you're not limited to the 40 minutes so that they'll stay on and talk to you after you're done recording because you get like a lot of really valuable information afterwards yeah i actually have riverside that's that's the 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 platform i use I think, oh no, Sierra stream. What, what are you using or what were you trying? Were you trying? Oh, I look, I mean, I looked at using StreamYard, but since I don't really do live streaming stuff, it didn't, I just ended up using zoom for now anyways. Yeah. I saw that. I, I, I try Riverside a couple of times, but I don't know. It's, it's just so much simpler for me to be able to do the zoom. Unfortunately. Yeah. The quality was a little bit better on your side, but. Um, hi there. Buzztoon said you had a YouTube short of kayaking. It was super relaxing to watch. <laughs> I don't know. Yep, the night on the water. And then he also said, I don't know if you guys saw, but but Dion makes two k a month from affiliate marketing on Amazon, I think, or whatever. I've actually so I looked in. Well, I, I can't say I've looked into it, but um. So like clever investor, Cody Sperber, um, he's like a guy that I'm super intrigued in because he's just raw and authentic. I think um, there's a lot of people that like kind of come off of that persona because they're trying to like attract those kind of people. But he seems like he's actually like raw and authentic, um, but he has a um, an energy like pop or whatever. I, I don't know what you want to call it. But like it's like literally like uh like 
just like an energy caffeine thing that you just take. And it's like almost like pre-workout. Um, and I've thought about like doing that, like signing up and like getting affiliated with that because it's super, for me, I used to be in sales and it's like, one of the easiest thing to sell is like things that you use all the time. So like, in like affiliate marketing, it just makes sense. Like if you use something like, okay, so like Sierra, um, like one of the easiest ways that you can like monetize your, like your handyman stuff or like, um, your like, you know, DIY things is like, okay, you use a saw. So, okay. You use that saw. Well, guess what? You don't just say, I use this saw. You put a link that's your affiliate link to your Amazon site that sells that saw. So anybody that sees that now goes and clicks that. And now you get the, the, the revenue of anything affiliate. So like, that's like a really good way for you to like bring in like all of your YouTube, your podcast, whatever, where you can actually monetize your viewers. And you're not really necessarily monetizing them. It's just like, if they like you and they like what you're using and they don't have it, they can just click your link. So it's like really easy. So, I mean, affiliate marketing for me really makes sense. Like once you like get that audience that likes and trusts you. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. I've been thinking for a while about um, putting together a video of like the basic tools that you need to do most like DIY renovations around your house and then having them all linked because I mean, obviously tools are higher ticket items too. Right. So that's, that's already better as far as affiliate marketing goes. Um, but just like, that's one of the things that when we got started, you know, that's the biggest complaint to DIY stuff is like, oh yeah, it, you, it's like a hundred dollars in materials, but then it's like $800 in tools. Right. So it's kind of, um, one of those things that like, what do you really need to pull this project off? And do you have to have like these fancy tools? And, and we did a lot of stuff where, before you ever bought a nail gun, right. Where we had like, a little nail punch and a, and a hammer. And we were putting up board or trim boards with that. And so, um, I think I could create a lot of content around that and, and definitely do the affiliate, um, stuff with, with the DIY stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great if you're doing, especially like I'm, most of the people I follow, that's, I'm pretty sure that's how they make their money. It's cause it's like, all, all they're doing all day long is like, Hey, I, I have this affiliate in my, in my store. It's like, they have a Shopify store and it's like, they just put like anything that they review in their store and then anybody can go and click in it. And like Ryan, you know, you could, you know, put that kayak that you had that short on and you know, <laughs> people can go buy that kayak. <laughs> That'd be a good one. It's I'm going to do cat bucks. stuff. I'm going to do cat stuff. Yeah. Cat, cat food. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be better, man. My affiliate thing expired because I wasn't, putting links to it so i gotta oh, really? re yeah i gotta reactivate it yeah i've thought about doing it i honestly I, one of my biggest things so i i buy a lot of stuff um i'm very i'm bougie when it comes to like tools like i'm like <laughs> dude it's like it's crazy like the right tool just makes the job so much easier so much faster and so like i have a hammer drill and i have like just like the like the drill hammer, like it's like, like a, a all in one combo. And I just did a job where like, it took me like three hours to like put it to drill like concrete out. Like it should not take me this long. So I went out and bought like a hammer drill and you know, and so it was like, my thing is, is like, I bought this whole kit for like $400 to get like the $350 <laughs> hammer drill. <laughs> I don't need the kit. It's like, I just bought it. Cause I'm like, I want the hammer drill. And like, why wouldn't I spend an extra $300 to get this $150 tool? <laughs> so <laughs> you better put, you better put the link in the chat yeah, for so affiliate, I, your affiliate I, link. What I thought about doing is like, just like having where like, I just run like, Hey, you know, comment on this and you win something. But I've also heard some bad things about that. It's like when you do that, you get like a lot of like bots and I don't know, like it, it's not like real organic growth. Like if you do like giveaways, the um, times, I don't know yeah, if you guys have heard about that. The times in like my merchandise business when I would give away um free like shirts or custom designs or anything like that, the it was not worth it. It it got some engagement, but it just was not worth the yeah the spam accounts that it attracted and the amount of like foreign stuff trying to enter giveaways that were like you know it's obviously us only for for what i was doing and it yeah i 
it, it was not worth it. At least on Instagram. It could be worth it maybe on another platform, but that was my experience. I've heard I've heard that multiple places. It's like it's not really worth it. It's not worth it because like once you like get on that algorithm, like you can't get off of it. Mm. All right. Well, anything else you guys want to chat on or there was something I forgot. Did Mark, did Mark answer this same question? I, I don't think so. Yeah. Getting uncomfortable, yeah. Mark. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> this is all just fun for me, man. This is just, you know, just trying to do this, grow, you know, I guess stop sending winky faces to people trying to get to do <laughs> this. That's schedule. creepy, man. It's creepy. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, Did you go back and delete it? I'm going to go screenshot. I don't it. even know. <laughs> I I don't think it was three times, maybe two. It, it was three <laughs> comments in a row. I, like I said, I was doing something else at the same time too. So I was like, were you were working out at two and o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's even creepier. Two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> three wingy faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, but it's like whatever, seven o'clock for you guys, or, or you know, I just I just asked them. <laughs> no, I don't care, man. I just re- I remember by the second one I thought about saying something, and then after the third one, I was like, "Oh no!" So uh, I so I commented or I replied to her on his behalf, saying that she should just schedule a time slot because he wasn't coming right out and saying that he. Was I was going like, to give you a winky We'd face. We'd love to too. hear what you have to say, wink. And I'm just like, "What are you doing?" See, you're like the manager. You got to step in. Oh, anyways, I don't see. I think I think you should start charging Mark like, uh, like you know, for like using your likeness in your face. <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna, I am gonna start booking photo shoots, I guess, in in outfits like Joel suggests, and <laughs> and uh, y'all pay for it. Then I'll have content for my my own stuff, and then y'all can use them on your thumbnails. Uh, you say that all i'm thinking of is like what kind of outfits are you wearing like are we wearing like yodeler outfits like you, like uh, Mickey over, Mouse? overalls like, i don't know what's i mean i don't know what um <laughs> overalls, overalls. <laughs> what's the next project you need to find another project right me yeah Ooh. oh do you have uh, a project right now or do you need one no, I don't need one. I got plenty of crap to do. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, we're still. I have. I have one more coat of mud to put on, um, and I got a light work. Yeah, I I have some mud to put on the ceiling over some a bad tape job that was done before we moved in. But once we're done with that, then I'm painting, and then I can put the flooring in. Have you ever Have you ever heard of level five uh, tools, drywall tools? Yeah. I have. Yeah. I'm, but I'm I'm cheap. I'm not bougie <laughs> like you. <laughs> Our nicest I, uh, tools, getting... and this is this is not a joke. Our nicest tools we found on the road <laughs> <laughs> that had fallen off of a contractor's truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I talked about did he drop the boot? <laughs> yeah. I'll have a giveaway and I'll give it I'll give I'll give my uh my tools away to you, Sierra. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'll in, I'll enter your giveaway. <laughs> We can we can stage it so that it's just a transfer. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, the level five tools is like super nice when you're doing like mud, um, because it's like super clean, consistent, like, um, you know. But I would say that's probably like that's probably like my best uh, attribute is like dr- drywall. Like I'm I'm pretty good at it. Oh, I hate yeah, it. Me too. Me too. That's my you. That's you my guys, I would. I would gladly pay for y'all to come out here. Never, I never said I liked it. I just said I'm good at it. So it sucks. Doing, doing this is lids, what we need to list all the tools that you use. We can chop up this up and then start putting out like little baby mini videos with your little, you know, all the different affiliate links. And somebody can make money. I don't know. Mikey said I'm <laughs> deflecting the question about myself. You are. For sure. Oh, you didn't answer it. Uh, well, honestly, I, nothing is really uncomfortable already. I mean, after I think just getting on camera and, you know, doing these things and lives and 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this all just kind of two o'clock in the morning is comfortable. Yeah, that's just part of my routine already. That's just uh, my habit. I got if I don't do it, then I'm just gonna be my the rest of my days just thrown out of whack, and then I'm just like grouchy the rest of the day. Now I'm trying to figure out when to do it, and then when Joe shows up late, I'm gonna be more upset, and then two minutes early. Yeah, it's kind of shocking. Three times in a row. Yeah, that's like well, what that's that's like my week. My weak point is like regiment. I hate where I hate regiment. Like it's I hate it. <laughs> it's so much that you have a, a child proof on your Instagram. So we're doing a live and it keeps like shutting off on us. Like your 10 minute scroll time or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dude. I it's bad. Like I I gotta like stop myself from scrolling aimlessly. Like I don't know. Like I I like get on there. I'm like, I'm going to post something. And then I'm like, sc- I like get caught scrolling. And I'm like, scroll, scroll, scroll. It's like, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> but we're doing yeah. a live and it's like, wh- where do you go? It's like, oh man, my stuff <laughs> kicks me out or whatever. <laughs> Every 15 minutes. Oh, I have it set for 30 minutes. So my max time is 30 minutes. A day. Oh, oh, oh really? and, then, and then it's like if I like ignore it, it's like every 15 minutes from there. Ah. So Mark, speaking of yes. like where did you where did you go? Remember when you were interviewing me and I started like getting up and like walking to the other side of the house? Yeah. Like the 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 vacuum was like literally in my ear for like 10 minutes. And it, it didn't show up on the audio at all. Like that's just how good the zoom uh, sound blocking whatever uh, setting that they have. Oh, like, but yeah, they can hear my cats just knocking, like scraping on the door or whatever. I I, I can't hear that, but you can. I don't oh. usually hear your cat. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's how good Zoom's buffering is on their. Their <laughs> oh, but they heard it heard me or Ryan's cats. One of them. One of our cats. I don't. Yeah. What was, what was that? Yeah, somebody was going off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, did I leave my cat in the garage? Oh no, never mind. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot because it wouldn't come out. So I just closed the door and then, then it'll come out the next time I open it. But oh I so well since Hyder, since you're here, we're kind of past Christmas, but do you do Elf on the Shelf by any chance? Uh, I haven't, but I'd like to try it. Oh don't no, don't start. No, 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 no. no don't get the kids involved. <laughs> don't don't do it, man. <laughs> don't get how many, yeah, how many kids really, do you have? Never really heard anything about it though. How many oh. kids do you have? Hey, Sierra probably screenshots. I did. I was I was working on screenshots. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? What was Wait, the question? Hold on. I gotta delete this. I was like, yeah, that is like three in a row. That's it is. <laughs> hey, yeah, get bad. it. <laughs> Anyways, what she's still the... oh, she's gonna jump on um i think it's a bot that's not a real person <laughs> is that is that twitter no no it's on, oh, on instagram, instagram. Yeah, honestly that's why i can't stand facebook dude i i get so many requests for people to be my friends i'm like do i know you or do i kind of know you or should i just delete you like i don't know if you're a bot or not it's like i get so many friend requests on facebook it's I, I just started accepting everyone because it's like, I, I don't even know why I'm trying anymore. Like, uh, I got, I mean, I deleted Facebook, which was amazing. And I have, I mean, I did finally get back on there because a few people were like, for groups sake. Uh, are you? Um, yeah. And so, and so I'm on there, but I, I still keep getting tempted to delete it again. But like, even when I got back on, I think I deleted over 80% of like, I think I probably have like 12 friends or something on there now. Like, I I hate it. It's like, it's, I joined like a, I joined like a group uh for like real estate. And as soon as I joined that group, I got like 40 people that like requested to be my friends that have like no connections to me. And then there's like this one person where I'm like, I might know you. And now, like, all I'm doing is getting, like, friend requests of this one person that I thought I might know. But, like, I definitely don't know them. Like, I I know for a fact now I don't know them. And it's like, so it's like I can tell they're a bot because all these people that are one friend with the one person I thought I knew are, like, requesting to be my friend. I'm like, who are you? Like, why are you requesting to be my friend? I don't know. But, yeah, I hate Facebook. 
Yeah, I'm so not on there. Very you much do a at trader all. account, and they can't. All they can do is follow you. I don't see you, Sierra. On Facebook? Yeah. I mean, do you think you're gonna find Sierra Smith? <laughs> like you're probably, you're probably not. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah, I I usually have to add people because it's I I'm I'm just I'm one I'm one in a trillion on the Smith front. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't even waste right. your time. I'll I'll just add you. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys want to keep going or anything else you guys want to chat about? Any cool topics or what you guys working on? Or well, I was gonna say I uh. Um, on Friday of the Vegas trip, the 16th, I scheduled a tour at a place called Boxable, which is oh, like yeah. a tiny house place in yeah. Vegas. Yeah. And so hopefully go and get some good content doing that. Cool. Hey, you know who uses bass lane also or promotes it is uh, Jason Hartman. Yeah. Saw that today. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah I use I've been using it and Sierra now uses it and so does Josh. What is it? Yeah. Base lane. It's like a landlord banking bookkeeping type software. You can collect rent through there, and um, you can set up like multiple bank accounts, like virtual accounts. You can have like even like security deposit accounts so the money's separate. You can earn interest on it. You get like virtual credit cards or debit cards, and it's like bookkeeping too. So you can tag everything that everything that comes through. And then you can link external accounts. So if you have other banks and then you can, same thing, everything you can basically take care of the bookkeeping and then print out um, financials and things and tax stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. It's free. Free. Yep. Well, as I like to tell people that I call and text, nothing's ever free. They're selling your data to somebody. (laughs) Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It is nice though, because um, they have a good refer. Like you can actually get a referral bonus through them. Like where Hemlane had a referral thing, but you had to email it directly to the person. Where this place has like an actual referral link that you can put, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't. My tenants are supposed to pay rent on there on February first, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, he actually has an affiliate or like a link to it. So I might just reach out to them. Say, hey, I've been using you guys for like whatever, a year and a half already. But, well, you should yeah. get a kickback from me using your link. Yeah. There you go. Affiliate yeah. that. Drop that. Drop yeah. that in your bio. Yep. Yeah. I'll use it. I, I gotta I gotta be better at that. Yeah, you do. I don't know. Linktree. I just started using Linktree. Um, uh, yeah. And it makes it pretty easy to add like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I actually think I'm going to switch from Linktree to a landing page um, and, and kind of that way I can put YouTube stuff on there too, but um, like an actual video or something that is a little more captivating, but it's kind of interesting because there's a lot now there's a lot of other programs now that offer like essentially what link tree like premium offers, but they offer it for free. And for some reason, link tree just doesn't keep up with like the structure, but I guess just because it's kind of like the industry standard. So um, I think I am going to switch because I want to integrate like a calendar on that, on the bio link and, and a video, and then also like the links to, different affiliate stuff so we'll see but i'm still figuring yeah, I mean, that out you can do that all on linktree right i think on the premium version you can but oh, it's okay. a like it's a paid thing whereas like a lot like if you use um like convert kit or i think maybe even like mailchimp but they have like the landing pages is essentially like a link tree they have it set up that way where it kind of integrates all into one thing and so you can capture like you know your email as well as like have like your calendar and like all of that stuff, but it's, it's, it's included in your um, email marketing campaign stuff. So like you're not paying for a separate service for the same thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's something I got to get better at this year is like capturing people's email and creating like an email list. But I haven't like quite figured out the I haven't quite figured out like the audience I want to capture on that. So like I, I haven't decided if I wanted to be like, OK, contracting, investing, like kind of, you know, um, mindset focus. So like I got to figure that out before because it's like I, I don't know what I'm going to send like a weekly email about. It's like, oh, hey, like do this thing. Because I feel like you have to have actually have like a valuable like email every month or every week for like people to not to be like, ah, oh, I'm going to unsubscribe from you. But well, they're not going to unsubscribe if you don't send anything. <laughs> they won't have yeah. anything to unsubscribe. <laughs> That's true. Hey, so what what did you say? MailChimp? And what's the other one you mentioned? ConvertKit. And I I um, really like ConvertKit. It's a lot easier setup i think than mailchimp is so um yeah i i would check it out so it sounds like you're doing an email like an email list then no, well i am i am um so i ran like a think tank right so it's kind of like this essentially but not on youtube live and for just like new year's resolution goal setting stuff right and so i that was my first like test run with it and just got people's emails um for the think tank so then whenever I do another one. I, I can send it out to the people who were interested the first time, right? And then kind of keep it going that way. And then eventually, hopefully, have like a paid membership to do those, and then and it turn into coaching calls like uh, down the line. So that's kind of like how I'm building that part out. And it's definitely more along the lines of like mindset work rather than any specific topic. So, um, but I was I am using ConvertKit for that, and I I like it. You can you can have your um. You can do a newsletter through it, but you can also just use it for campaigns and marketing. So I kind of like that it has both of those options. Okay, nice. Yeah. I attended a conference a couple of years ago, listened to a guy by the name of Mike Dillard, and he told his story about his email list, pretty much saved his business. What he did was he would start, I think he started five, six, seven multi-figure businesses huge successful businesses and then he would sell them off and he was he was bougie too he would spend every last dollar well he was he was working on something there was uh there was a leak in, in his apartment and he got he got mold in his apartment he didn't know about it until he said he was sitting on his couch watching tv and he felt a click in the back of his head and from that moment on he said he couldn't sleep couldn't fall asleep he said anytime he would try to fall asleep he would get this like anxiety attack and just burst awake and couldn't go to sleep at all. So he was super desperate. Like his body was eating itself because it couldn't, he couldn't sleep. So he was uh, going to all sorts of doctors. He went to Peru and did the, the drug walk thing. He tried everything. He's smoking weed all the time to get to sleep. Finally, he, uh, long story, I know, but he, uh, he finds this doctor who gives him a toxicity test. The scale was one to 50 and he scored 22,000. Oh. So he was like super highly toxic. He had this mold that got infected in his brain and wouldn't let him sleep. So therefore he couldn't run his business. And he, he, that whole, uh, I think it was two and a half years. He couldn't sleep that whole two and a half years. He was relying on his email list, Whoa. just sending things out. I know it's a crazy story. Yeah. Sending things out and people would, would email back. He had some, I don't know. I want to say like half a million uh, people on his email list. So bigger than anything we were going to do, but yeah, pretty, pretty insane story. Hey, maybe, but just yeah, today, today. Yeah. This guy's the limit. Yeah. Mike Dillard. You might want to check him out on YouTube. I kind of remember. Yeah. I kind of remember hearing that. Something about the mold. That's why I remember seeing something about that. Yeah. So I, so someone I interviewed, was it yesterday? Um, his name is Jeffrey Byers and he is a demand generation manager. And so he works a lot with like sales funnels and like working between sales and marketing. Right. And he, he definitely felt strongly that email is not dead and that is, you know, a good Avenue, um, when it comes to, you know, promoting and marketing and stuff like that. He, he's a, he's a big believer in, in making sure your email list is, is built out. I actually have a, a buddy who is in marketing and um, he's like, uh, I think he's pharma, 
but he's like in NYC. Um, and so like we had a conversation and I was like, Hey man, like what, what do you think I should do marketing wise? Like, you know, I have, I'm doing X, Y, Z. He was like, I think you should like send out like emails, like new newsletters. And I was like, dude, no one even opens these emails. He was like, it's the biggest mark. He was like, it's the biggest way that we like drive revenue in like the, the bigger industries. He was like, marketing, emailing is, is king is what he said. So people like buy, buy lists, right? Like of like targeted lists and I just keep just stockpiling. Well, I mean, that's, that's how a lot of people like uh, monetize their email lists, like the marketing. Um, so like the newsletter, they don't necessarily make money off the newsletter. Um, they make money off of selling their newsletter like lists. So like they'll sell like their, like all their emails to like companies and like that, that's how they make money. I mean, and that's why everyone, like, when they give you a free course, you have to, like, put in your email. It's because you get added to their email list, and then they sell that email to, like, companies. And then, like, they'll use your email, depending on what they're, like, focused on, to, like, target market you. So. Yeah, it's for that reason I need to create a junk email. (laughs) Or a few of them. <laughs> That's funny. You get in target marketing. <laughs> it's like I want that. <laughs> yeah, I got two subscribers while we're doing this live. No oh, shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Two eighty. Two eighty. Two eighty eight, buddy. Two eighty eight. Woo! Hey, that's a lot, dude. Two eighty eight's yeah. a lot. I want to get to three hundred by the end of twenty twenty three. So, my one maybe I'll be a month behind. Oh, oh, it's interesting. So, so, Sierra, I need another picture for, for the last <laughs> five days. What's interesting, though, is that wink, you wink. you wanted to hit 300 and you asked people to subscribe one time. Oh, <laughs> I should have winked at them. <laughs> wink, wink. wink three times. <laughs> I'll leave you alone I, if you subscribe. Wink. I told you to film. You needed to film a video of you with your cat, and I sent you some ideas. And I'm like, that will get you to 300. You just have to get a short or a reel made of you with the cat, and you're you're golden. <laughs> All right, you gotta listen to the boss, I guess. <laughs> Him and the cat and a thumbnail of Sierra. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So did you decide on overalls? Is that what you said? I'm going to wear a cat costume. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I had an employee that had a side hustle where they were like a, a mascot. They, they had like all these mascots. Oh like, my gosh. Like, like, go to parties and like make good money. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I was just at a kid's party where like somebody dressed up as like Elsa. I mean, they were getting paid for it, so mm-hmm. yeah, you know. like furry, furry costumes. <laughs> no, furry <laughs> costumes. Yeah, like a like a, a bunny oh, a cat. I actually just had a joke uh, today about that. Um, I said everybody that takes their kids to Disney is, are just training them to be liking furries down the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so last time we invite you on, but <laughs> no. <laughs> no, like I said, man, I mean, about, maybe we should talk about tunnels uh, next time. <laughs> no, man. Well, Disney I'm trying, tunnels, to, trying to get tunnels. Lindsay on here. She couldn't make it. She'll be on next week, maybe. You know her, right, Joel? From X? No? No. Oh. I do. Yeah. Um, but I think that'd be nice to have a little extra <laughs> class. <laughs> well, I told her, man, this is just for practice, you know, for everyone to come on and practice and, you know, get comfortable and have fun. I selfishly started my podcast to like get better at like communication, to be honest. So I, I, honestly, it helps. I mean, like doing YouTubes and like stuff like this, like, um the podcast like just interviewing in general like it helps your communication skills so yeah you posted was that 
the same interview you did with that um just recent or was it an old one i saw on your you had a you oh, had an oh, instagram sorry, man. That, that was an old one that was an old one that was our oh. original interview back in november of 22 i wasn't talking to you I'm talking to greg well, you were talking no about no I, I know what you're talking about yeah you posted, uh, you posted he posted right. though no no but greg well, actually, i I have I have another podcast coming up. Um, it got cut short. Um, I tried to do something a little bit different uh, because uh, the, how Riverside uh, films it downloads to your computer locally, uh, so it's not really reliant on the Wi-Fi um, to like upload like quality wise. But you know, I checked my internet and it was good. And like halfway through the interview process, like my internet cut out. So, um, I had to like reschedule with him, but it's, it's actually Ryan Rice. I used to work with him. Um, he was like, um, I mean, he, he, he worked like, he was pretty high up in uh target as like running like stores and stuff like that. And, um, now he, he, he operates like, a um, a pretty successful wholesaling business and stuff like that. Um, and he flips like it, when I was working with him, he had like 17 flips going on at a time. So, um, he's like a pretty, pretty high, high individual when it comes to like work, work ethic and like systems and stuff like that. And so I'm pretty excited to put that out. I, I got to reschedule like the second half of the interview. Um, but I have like the first half of it done. Um, you know, I would say that's the hardest part about podcasting is just like scheduling stuff, like finding time to schedule stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nighttime works for me the best because my my daughter's sleeping and my wife usually doesn't care if I'm podcasting like late at night. So, uh, but like six o'clock, seven o'clock, she's like, "Yeah, can you stop doing that?" No, oh, yeah. We'll bring the cats on next, maybe next week or something. <laughs> <laughs> but Buzz Tune said after multiple interviews with Joel and. CR, you can see the flow getting better and better. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, it helps when you uh, tell me the topic. I can oh, better. set me up for that one. <laughs> I mean, it's true when I when I have a little time to prepare, I, it's a lot easier to uh, talk about it. All right, I'll try to do a better job on that. You, Hugo said that I was your co-host on your channel <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said i'm gonna start sending all of your guests bullet points <laughs> they yeah go. they might like it yeah and you're really gonna have to start delivering some dollars someone's way what is that if she's sending your clients bullet points you're gonna start sending some dollars someone's way i sent everyone her way <laughs> she's talking to mikey tomorrow no, but I'm just saying, if she's sending out bullet points for your clients. It's not my clients. It's just. I mean, your your guest. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, carry Mark's on. Mark's not making any money off of it either. Yeah, I'm trying to help you folks grow. I'm trying to help all of us grow at the same time. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what this is all about. Like at the end of the day, is like collaboration. Is like you pick up some people from my platform i pick up some people from your platform vice versa like joel's sierra's ryan's like and like the thing is is like at the end of the day like whoever you are resonating with like they'll like you and they'll follow you and then you know they like okay you provide enough value and then one of their friends are like oh you should listen to this guy he's, he, he's spitting like facts or you know whatever fire or, i don't know whatever like so i mean that's like the whole journey of like the like real like of instagram youtube i mean you collaborate enough that like you gain enough followers from like different like groups and people get to know you i mean that's that's all it is is like there's no difference between somebody who's famous and somebody who's not it's just like someone who's famous more people know who they are yeah and i kind of going back to what we were talking about before just you know doing it over and over like most people just stop they do 10 or 20 or 30 and they stop like if you don't stop like just continue to grow just not just a, yeah so what's the what would you say the key is to not stopping because i to me i think it's like having the right people around you because otherwise like it gets really lackluster yeah. pretty fast <laughs> yeah like I'm, I'm assuming everyone's seen the last dance 
Jordan Bowles? Mm-mm. I've seen it. Okay. Well, yeah. like, Jordan, like, talking about how, like, he was literally in people's faces, like, an asshole, a dickhead to all of his people because he was pulling them with him because he was going to get a title. They didn't endure what he endured, getting his ass kicked by the Pistons in the 80s, being like a 35 points a, a season score, getting knocked around, elbowed in the face. And so he was not going to let his teammates hold him back. He pulled them with him. So it's like being around the people you want to be like or, you know, help each other get to a certain spot, like just pulling each other to where you're trying to go and just by just pure osmosis, just association, pulling each other, you know, up up the mountain. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think it's just finding the right people, you know, right blend of things. Like how Sierra's more bullet point driven and wants to know ahead of time and I'm kind of just winging it. But it just mm-hmm. it just works, you know, just blends. <laughs> You'll never want to come on my podcast. I, I straight wing it. I, oh, oh see, doing. well, that, you know, I think Mikey might have said something. He commented that that we we connected well on our when I interviewed you, like it kind of just flowed. So yeah, you know, you're just finding the right people and it just kind of works. I think you know? I mean, I I understand now, like having done it several times, like the idea of like freestyling it, right? Like, because you get good at asking the questions, but for most people who are just coming on your podcast one time yeah, and they're I, like, I, I... they've not been on anyone's podcast, like they, it's like, it's hard to convince them sometimes to even get on and record. And if you at least have given them an outline, at least for me, it's easier to talk them into actually coming on the channel because they're like oh i need to be prepared and i'm like well you you really don't but yeah. <laughs> you know i i just think it for a lot of people it is really nerve-wracking at the beginning just wink calm them down yeah i mean like um one of the things that i subscribe to is pod match and i've had some guests from there and i always do a a pre-call because I, I i really want to know what the hell this person's done and dig deep <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> no, I know. Oh, and like, I don't want to podcast with a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to know what the hell's going on with the person, right? I, I, I would rather spend time talking to them than reading something on a website or God knows what. So, like, but I would say probably sixty percent of people um, that I talk to, I ask that question: Do you do a pre-call? And then most of them, sixty percent, don't do a pre-call. They yeah. just wing it. So, I usually try to go watch like a, a video, an interview that they were on before or something. To try and get like a backstory and then talk about something on that. Yeah. So I mean so. the the number one rule of sales is people love talking about themselves. So like when you're like interviewing somebody, like all you have to say is like, hey, you just got to be yourself and talk about yourself. And like, no one has a problem talking about themselves. So it's the easiest thing to talk about is yourself. So so the the guest that I got um, recently for like the um, stuff I'm trying to do now, I, someone had I was following someone on Instagram that was talking about like um, how YouTube podcasts like getting your your link in uh, the description of a YouTube podcast is like really good for SEO for your site because it's a it's a good backlink to have. And so I just posted on that guy's post and i was like hey i have a youtube podcast if anyone wants to be a guest and take advantage of this and i got a bunch of dms from people who were like oh I, you know i would be on and it's like i kind of had to vet through it to see like who was actually a good fit but it was a really good way to just like get willing participants <laughs> <laughs> yeah i better do that <laughs> Yeah, there's so much to YouTube that I don't know enough about. I haven't done research on, but someday. YouTube is YouTube is very um, daunting to me. Like, just like so much more that goes into YouTube. I feel like. Speaking of yeah, links, did you already get that affiliate link for those overalls you're gonna try to promote on the thumbnail? You know, I I had to. I'm like Mark, and I had to redo my amazon affiliate link because it expired because i didn't get enough traction or whatever and but i did i finally did do it so 
but I, I, you know, I can't buy for myself. If, if any, if any of y'all are shopping on Amazon in the next like week, you just let me know and I'll send you an affiliate link so I can keep my staff. <laughs> Man, everybody's showing up late now. We got Frank and Janet on fire popping in now. Oh, really? Yeah. How long have we been going? Oh, should we be going for a couple? Yeah, I, I gotta wrap it up soon. I gotta yeah, eat. And I, got, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta jump off. Damn, we got, yeah. ten, we got ten people on there. Yep. From Greg. All right, everyone. Oh, Levi's. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have. Sh- I you can have share the screen. Foot. You can share the screen instead. I'm from the Midwest. I'm from the Midwest. I live in Tennessee. And I already own overalls. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I was just giving it a link. That way you can like, you know, just drop it in your your link tree or your landing page. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna wear yeah. I'm gonna wear overalls and then link them. In the, you know, you know though, I did I do have some um uh boots like kind of like short, I don't know. You got boots on the work, ground? Boot, work boots that yeah exactly that i use or that i wear for when i'm doing the diy stuff and i actually have had other girls comment and be like oh i actually like the boots that you're wearing and so like, i need to have a freaking link to the to the clothes i guess it, it doesn't feel like that's what i'm advertising at all but whatever yeah give um, people what they you want. say you're did you say you're in tennessee yeah I have a couple of friends in Tennessee. I, I should link you up uh, real estate wise. Um, nice. What part of Tennessee? Um, sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, I have a couple. I have, I have some friends. I, they, there's a couple like all over. So. Nice. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Where, where at in Tennessee? I am about an hour east of Nashville. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know the one kid um, that I'm pretty close with. He's in Nashville. Um, the other is, I want to say, like, um, she's technically in North Carolina. Uh, she's working for a company, but she invests. Um, it's like an hour, like north of the Smokies. Um, I'm trying to think of what. That oh, time okay. Was. So, but I mean, yeah, I have a couple of friends in, in, in Tennessee. So depending on where you invest, I, I don't, you invest, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we yeah, have, just, we have something here and then, yeah. yeah, we'll probably turn our primary into an investment. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure like the wild, wild west, uh, yeah. boys at, um, in, in like the, the group that I was in on um, wealthy investor, I'm pretty sure they're from Tennessee as well, like Nashville. So, um, yeah, I have, I have, a, I have, a, I have a decent connection there. Tennessee is a hot place to invest for sure. And it's great for taxes to live here. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess let's wrap it up, man. Anybody want final words or? Anybody into Bitcoin? Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> not. It, what is it? Everybody doing? into it. Yeah. Digital real estate. Yeah. What no, I, I am gonna do the hive mapper thing, um, which is a, a different crypto coin. And that will be my my first introduction to any sort of um crypto stuff, but it'll be it'll be a good way to learn. Yeah, I follow it though. I'm following it all the time. I just I just haven't ever put money into a I I try putting money into a KuCoin app or something. I just I asked too many questions and I was too busy. So I didn't finish it. But Dogecoin, let's go to the moon. <laughs> I mean, Bitcoin's gonna hit six figures at some point. It's just a matter of time. So we'll never sell. Never sell. That's right. Huddle. Uh no, I, I I actually I had a friend that um he like day traded Bitcoin, which is like super interesting. Um he made a lot of money off of it, but um it's like one of those things that I don't know. I feel like one week everyone's like high on Bitcoin, and the next week they're like, Bitcoin's gonna fail. And so it's just something I've just not really had an interest in. I don't know. Yeah, I've put hundreds of hours of studying into it, probably 300 hours or so. And the protocol <clears throat> and the network, that's where it's at. It's it's more than a currency. It's a it's a network, it's a communication system. It's definitely something I think you should look into. What would you say the number one benefit of being in like Bitcoin networking? 
it's permissionless. So, okay. and it's, it's final settlement. There's a, there's a lot of good to it, it but being permissionless, uh, I just sent a wire transfer. What was it yesterday? And it was a pain in the ass. Bitcoin, it would have been 10 minutes. No questions asked. No arbiters. Just decentralized network. Yeah, yeah. The whole like upside of it is the, the decentralized part. Um, I just think like anytime you like mess with the government's money, like they're gonna like try to crack down on it at some point, which is why I, is that's why like I've I've never been bullish on it. Is like there's just too many governments. It's gonna lose lose a lot of money to like have it become like super popular because they're just, they'll just make it so hard to use that it's like the the mass populace won't won't do it it's only like those like people that are like ah screw the government that is that is kind of the weak point is the on ramps and off ramps but with enough adoption it is a peer to peer currency so you can send it to wherever whenever there's uh, there's mesh networks so if, say the internet does go down as long as you still have a phone that can bluetooth to one another two phones that can bluetooth to one another you can still run the bitcoin network it's pretty resilient We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to talk about that on the next down. YouTube. Yeah. We'll have to talk about that on the next YouTube live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just worried I'm going to lose it or something or whatever, you know, like. You're going to lock yourself out of yeah, the like, you know, Yeah, like, you know, yeah, like that's. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, the thing is there is no support. There is no support, yeah. man. It's that's all That's my, you. that's kind of my biggest hiccup, I think, for me. Was it, wasn't there like uh, somebody on YouTube that like, not YouTube, but like Instagram that got like pretty famous because they found like. That they had like an old wallet that was worth like yeah i think so like yeah. it was like a crazy amount of money like billion like millions of dollars or something like that like they had like three bitcoins that they bought like off originally and then like they found like years later that they had the wallet and like when you find out you're like a millionaire like four years right. later or something God. like that there's some other guy that had his had his bitcoin on his i think it was his tower of his computer and he tossed it and he's he's actually been in the junkyard for like years searching for this thing in the junkyard. <laughs> wow. What about the there's that like guy that won like three bitcoins and like uh it was like a raffle or something and he like traded away for like two pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Like twenty thirty something like that. I think right. that was the first purchase with Bitcoin was was a pizza for ten <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> oh wow but um all right guys it's like yeah it's well yeah man. all right well we got I'm some gonna, topics for next man. week cool thanks everyone yeah, yeah we'll do this again man bye yeah, it was a lot of fun bye everyone good night